Hey yo, how's it going, everybody? I bet you guys didn't expect a live stream today, or like two live streams in a week, but uh, yeah, I just decided, well, I'm gonna be a bit busy next week, so might as well do a fun little stream and catch up on some more Pokemon. So yeah. We are just starting off exactly where we left off last time, so I'm just gonna be, just gonna be, which I'm gonna call it, training up everybody, getting some items, and doing the last bit of the barbecue battle club. Okay, great. I don't want this one. I want to get the matcha one. Uh, let's see how effective is heavy slam against Sinistee. Uh, I need to figure out how to get the matcha one as well. So where are we at? We're at Amaris's place. All right, so I'm trying to figure out who should I go to first? Should I go to, uh, what's his face? Or should I go to Lacey? Drayton, that's what this guy's name is. It's like, should I go to Drayton's place or Amaris's, or um, Drayton's place or Lacey's place? Hmm, I feel like, because like, I want to save Lacey for last. Because she's cute as frick. But at the same time, Drayton has been following Weston around the entire time and he feels more like the final boss, considering that he is, first of all, he's dragon type, so, and that's a pretty hard typing to fight against, and... The other one would be uh, is that he was the previous champion of the barbecue club, so I don't know. Ooh, nice Andy Rodney. Uh, kitchen cleaned, has lab, Omega Prime pre-ordered and ready for bed. Let's game. Man, do let me know how that uh, Omega Prime is, because I was heavily debating whether I should get it or not, and but now that the pre-order window is closed, it's like, well, I can't get it even if I wanted it to, or if, even if I wanted it. But the more I think about it, the more I'm just like, well, when it came to R.I.D., I never had Omega Prime, so I don't really have any nostalgic attachment to it. Unlike, uh, unlike Armada Prime, which is why I got the the commander class uh, prime figure. But I don't know. Plus that thing, uh, Omega Prime, seems super gigantic and I have no idea where I would put it even if I did get it. I'll let you know uh, come Christmas time. Oh, it's coming out Christmas. Nice. Perfect gift for yourself. Yeah, I think my Christmas gift to myself would probably be for like next Christmas for uh what's it for like Christmas 2025 because I'm pretty sure that's when all of the Devastator Studio Series Devastator figures will be coming out or will have been out like the last release so I can get my hands on a box set oh wait do we need enough okay yeah we have enough money we've got enough barbecue points All right, and Lacey is ice type. Or no. Yeah, Studio Series Devastator. So, uh, yeah, Alex Gonzo. So, basically, Studio Series, uh, we just got, or not just got confirmation, we got leaks that Studio Series, uh, no, so it's going to be Studio Series 1986. So, The Transformers, The Movie, Devastator. So, we'll be getting... A Devastator made of individual parts and not as a big hollow box set like Combiner Wars was. But yeah, so we've got leaks that we are getting... I, I think it's late at the end of this year. We are getting two Voyagers and two Deluxes. So, and that doesn't seem like enough for Devastator because Devastator is six pieces. So I assume in 2025 we will be getting two Leader Class figures for Devastator. But, uh, yeah, and I think 
It'll either be, I think it's uh, Thursday the 21st or Thursday the 28th. We'll have a an official reveal, a live stream from Hasbro unveiling those Transformers figures. Or maybe just one of the Devastators. Or who knows? Devastator. Yeah, 86 Devastator. I hope he has drill hands. Did he have drill hands in the cartoon? Or was that a Transformers Devastation thing? Alright, Coastal Plaza. Oh wait, shoot. We need to... Uh, set up our Pokemon. Because... Because I don't know a fairy type weakness. Because fairy types are weak to fire, right? Fairy. Fairy type weakness. And fairy type has been out for 11 years now, and I still don't know the entire weakness chart to it. Alright, so. Uh, fairy type moves are not effective against fire, poison, steel. Oh, wait, these types are super effective against fairy type Pokemon. Poison and steel. Wait, so only poison and steel types. Okay, I always thought that fire was super effective against fairy, but I guess that's just me cherry picking my memories of fighting a bunch of Florgises and Floettes in Pokemon X and Y. Because they're Grass Fairy. And I remember doing a lot of just knocking out wild Floettes and stuff just so I can get a shiny. But yeah, I don't have a shiny one of those. So you can see how well that went. But yeah, Poison and Steel types. Let's go. So we're going to have... Okay, so Yaoi Hands can stay. Let's go Teflon up there. Hmm. Okay, do we have any Pokemon that have poison and steel type? I think Ghirardelli has some poison type moves. Okay, yes. So let's bring Ghirardelli out. And then... I guess we can bring out Miso because she's going to have a ground type Pokemon. I think she's going to have her Excadrill. So, well, Excadrill is steel ground. So I think the steel is going to balance out the super effectiveness of the, of the water types. So I think maybe just having a fighting type, which we have Yaoi hands with. So I guess we can get Seasig up. Let's get Monosodium out of here. And Weiss is a bit too weak right now. I don't know. I think I think this is as good as we're going to get, honestly. Well, how many... What moves does Decade know? Okay, yeah, that will not help. And I'm kind of worried about putting Curry Pawn up here because of her Excadrill. If you get a Metagross from the Icy Zone, you should be fine. Ah, okay. Backseat Gaming Squad. Oh, yeah. Right. I forgot you stream here and in Twitch. So when you actually called my YouTube name, I got scared. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Hasbro guys said next week is the United stuff and the week after Studio Series. Okay, so we'll get we'll get to see a little bit of Studio Series Devastator on the 28th. So yeah. Next week is the United stuff. Legacy United. Well, what are what are they revealing for Legacy United? Is that Oh wait, they're revealing for Legacy United, they're revealing because we already seen leaks of it. Is it that Beast Machines, Cheetor, Core Class? What else were they revealing? I don't even remember. Because these figures were revealed like so long ago. They're doing that Rock Lords helicopter. 
yeah, Beast Wars, Silver Vault. Uh, what else? They were doing that... Is it Generation 1 Gears? The Deluxe Class? Oh yeah, Leader Class Sandstorm. That is right. Yeah, I'm not really too interested in this wave of Legacy. Honestly. But yeah. Would Hasbro ever bring the Beast Machines back? I mean, they're bringing back Beast Machines Cheetor as a little... $9 figure. So maybe they'll do some more Beast Machines figures. Still want Sandstorm and Silverbolt? I don't know. It's like... When it comes to Transformers, I enjoy first and foremost the robot mode. And when it comes to Sandstorm, it's very much... When it comes to Triple Changers, you know one mode is going to get sacrificed in order to better two modes. And they sacrifice the robot mode to make the alt modes look fantastic. And the thing is, is that I really like robot modes when it comes to Transformers, so... I don't know. Just seeing Sandstorm with a giant frickin' cage on its back looks a little weird. But I'm pretty sure once I see a Prime v Prime video, then I'll turn around. But from the stock images, which I know I shouldn't trust stock images because they're not that great... Uh, but yeah, once I see more, once I see like an in-hand review of it, maybe I'll come around, but so far nothing in this wave is really interesting. I thought I would like Gears, but, uh, as somebody who just bought the Studio Series Brawn figure, like, three weeks ago, I think I'm over my, uh, fascination with Gears, because I'm just like, oh, this... Brawn here, it satisfies me. I don't need to buy Gears. And Gears, I saw the transformation for Gears. And it looked a little bit uh, rich coming from me who likes complex transformations. But it seemed a bit too complicated. Uh, it's like, I mean, Brawn isn't that much more complicated. It's Gears is just a little bit more intricate. And I think that ends up making Gears a bit too blocky looking, which I get that's what they were going for. But I don't know. Maybe if I get my hands on Gears, I'll be fine with it. Because I do like little cute tiny box transformers. So, and his alt mode is very much in, like, almost a cube. So, but who knows? You really need to try Thrilling 30, Springer, or Sandstorm. Those molds have no sacrifices. I know that's... Uh, Thrilling 30, Springer, or Sandstorm is such a legendary figure. And I've always wanted to... Not even to own. I just want to know somebody who has one. So I could, like, play with it. Or, like, I wish I could go to a toy convention and see somebody who's selling it. And just say, hey, can I just play with it for a little bit? You know? Oh, um, there's our girl Lacey. Yeah, she'll be saying that when we're in bed. Anyways. Uh, oh, is it, if it isn't Mako, I'm glad you decided to pay me a visit. Please follow me. I'll show you to the trial stage. Alright, what are we gonna do? Thank you for coming to the Coastal Plaza to challenge me. And I really am sorry for the way I protested you joining the bar uh, Barbecue League, Mako. Wow, Halo Infinite looking crazy these days. Oh my gosh, is... Is, uh... Is Twitch, did I have it on Halo Infinite? Oh shoot. Give me one second to change this up into... Pokemon Scarlet. No, it says Pokemon Scarlet on Twitch. Oh, wait, because of the, the thing. Okay, yeah, let me change. I didn't even realize. Yeah, whoops. The 2022 game, I think. Yeah. There we go. Never mind. It's all good. Anyways. Uh, of course, it's true that this uh, this is quite irregular under the bylaws of our school clubs. 
But mainly I didn't want you to get dragged into the drama that's been troubling the club lately. I suppose our trial has already officially begun. So, so let's get it. Uh, let's get to it and have some fun. The trial that I came up with is a Pokemon quiz. Oh god. I'll ask you five questions about Pokemon. If you can answer them all correctly, then you pass. My Pokemon knowledge isn't as good as it used to be. Are you ready? Sure. Great. Then I'll just let then I'll just get everything ready. You should have made it even more incorrect. Okay, yeah, you know what? You know what? That's that's a good idea. Uh there we go. How world DLC. There we go. That's this this is the game with that, that we're playing. Totally correct. All right, here we go. And look, it's everyone's favorite Pokemon, Pikachu, here to help. And with that, uh, question one. Pikachu is an Electro-type Pokemon well known for producing electricity within its body. But in which part of its body does it store electricity it generates? All right, let's just grab those cheeks. No, Peek. yes. No, no, 2032. Right, let's do that. There we go. Even more incorrect. Oh, wait, Power World. No, we shouldn't make it. Power World. Power World 3. W what should the title be for Power World 3? Let's see. What's a what's a funny Revengeance? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's good. There we go. Now that's the sound of a good game. Not Andy Rodney couldn't be Electric Boogaloo because that would be Power World 2. Power World 2 is Electric Boogaloo. Now we're on to Power World 3 Revengeance. Pikachu stores its electricity in the sacks and its cheeks. You poke the sacks, you'll get a little shock, but don't you think they're just super round and cute? Now then, I think we're ready to move on to our next quiz question. Alright, let's see, what could this one be? Power World made so much money that they skipped right to three. Yeah, that sounds like something that they would do. Take a look at Venonat here. It's bigger than you'd think it would be, isn't it? It's also fluffy and squeezable and terribly adorable, really. So here we go with question two. Even on the darkest nights, Venonat is able to use a certain part of its body like a radar, which allows it to detect uh, surrounding objects. What part of Venonat's body acts like a radar? Probably going to be the antennae. What? Uh... Functions like a radar. I don't know. What is this? I don't know Pokemon biology. I'd assume it's... It's like a echolocation. So... Eyes? Okay, let's go with eyes. You've got to be freaking kidding me. How is I, a biology studier, failing that? What in the frick? It was either the antenna or the mouth, I was going to say, because either sensing vibrations with the antenna or sending out vibrations with its mouth. Ugh. Alright, getting weary of my quiz, how about a cup of tea, or maybe three Sinistee siblings? Here's question three. Sinistee like to live in precious antique teacups. There are a lot of phonies out there. It's hard to tell which cups are genuine antiques. One of these three Sin uh, Sinistee is an 
is an antique form synesty, meaning it found a real antique cup. So which synesty is the real deal? So, uh... I don't know anything about this Pokemon. Uh, let me see. How do you even tell? Okay, let me see. Oh wait, it's a it's a thing at the bottom, right? I think Okay, I think Yeah, it has like a stamp at the bottom, I think. Yes, this one. Okay, I know my I know my thing. Didn't yet didn't even have to look at chat. I mean, I thank you guys for the hints, but just know that I didn't look at you guys for the help. Because, yeah, in real antique China, if it has a stamp, then that means it's genuine. That's right. The antique form synesty can be recognized by the mark on the bottom of its cup. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely trying to watch out for the Excadrill. Uh, but, yeah, welcome to the stream, CT1. You're not too late. We've only been streaming for like 20 minutes and I haven't even done much in the 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, it's already been 20 minutes. What the heck? What have I been doing? Uh, but it doesn't matter where they're antique form, whether they're antique form or phony form. They're all so darn cute. Not as cute as you, Lacey. Now then, I think we're ready to move on to our next quiz question. Oh boy, Minior. This is the Meteor Pokemon, Minior. It comes in all kinds of different colors, you know. I'll first ask you to take a good look at its pinkish min- uh, mini- uh, look at this pinkish Minior for me. Oh boy. Oh no. Uh, this one. There we go. I'm good at these games. Even after they return to their meteor form, you still manage to find the right one. Aren't Minior adorable? Their color varies depending uh, based on what they eat. Yes, I do find them adorable. That's why I own a Minior. Now then, I think we're ready to move on to the very last quiz, Pokemon. Ooh, nice Granbull. Oh look, here comes Granbull. Maybe it heard the word pink and decided to stop by. Aren't Grand Bulls more, like, lavender-colored? This little sweetie is one of my own Pokémon. It's always with me. Our last question, question 5, will involve Grand Bull here. Grand Bull is quite delicate, uh, quiet, and lovable. Uh, is a quiet, delicate, and lovable Pokémon, of course, but can you tell me this? When I take a nap with my adorable Grand Bull, which part of its body do I use as a pillow? I would assume belly. Of course, that's what I do. I use its soft, adorable tummy. When I cuddle up to it, it's so soft and cozy. We both fall asleep in just seconds. And that's the end of my quiz. I managed to get all five of my questions right, which means... Congratulations, you've officially cleared my elite trial. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a who's that Pokemon sort of thing, but yeah. Why don't we head back to the plaza? <sighs> oh man, we're battling on a battlefield that's the exact same colors as I am. Since you passed my elite trial, you've earned the right to challenge me to a battle. But what do you want, uh... But what do you want to do now? Ready to move straight to it? Got it. No time to waste then, right? Let's get to our positions. Alrighty. Hopefully... We can... Uh, not get destroyed. Let me properly introduce myself for this. I am Lacey of the Elite Four. I really didn't expect to get a challenge from someone like you, Mako. Rightfully, you do belong to a different school. Honestly, I'm still a bit shocked, but I won't let my personal feelings get in the way of our battle. So, uh, let's see. 
first of all, I should tell you, I mostly use fairy type Pokemon. They're just some, there's just something, uh, there's just nothing like an adorable pink fairy, right? They're weak to poison and steel. Anything too caustic or cutting doesn't suit them. Oh, but you must already know that already, right, Mako? Uh, t t totally. Yeah, I totally didn't Google search what steel types were weak to for this. Why does she talk like she's flirting with you? I, I don't know, but I don't object to it. Now, for this battle, I'm not going to hold anything back. I want to make sure that you walk away with a proper understanding after all. You're about to learn that cuteness is real strength. Yeah, if cuteness is real strength, and she's got enough power to punch me right through a wall. Oh, wow, she's got the same bangs as I do. Wow, isn't that crazy? Am I just a robotic Lacey? This time I'll be facing you with my usual party as a member of the Elite Four. I totally forgot Cotton Me is a fairy type. Or, sorry, not Cotton Me. Uh, Whimsicott. Feels like Lacey was supposed to have a bigger role. Yeah, it definitely does feel like that. All right, so what's Heavy Slam? User outweighs the target. All right, so we're going to Heavy Slam Whimsicott. And then I guess Gigaton Hammer Grand Bull. Oh, and that's... Oh, Light Screen. Okay, I thought it was Reflect. Ooh, okay, there we go. There we go. A rock-solid strategy to go after weaknesses, which is why I'll be turning it right back on you. Alright, we're doing good this stream. Alright, wow, I thought that was a shoe in to do a one-hit knockout. Primarina. Wow, okay. Having a starter Pokemon of Alola. Well, I guess Alola and Unova are still one country, technically speaking. So I guess it wouldn't be that strange for her to have a Primarina. Alright, so how about Whimsicott again and Gigaton... Oh, wait, I can't use Gigaton Hammer two times. Let's go with a... Brutal Swing. Oh, wait, everybody gets hit with Brutal Swing. Yeah, let's go. Oh, Thunder Punch. Darn, okay, never mind. I should have read your comment first. Oh god, Moonblast. Holy moly. Wow, that didn't do jack. Alright, I think Yowie Hands is done for. Unless we can get... Unless we can get Primarina to... Uh, get knocked out by Teflon here. A okay, slow bro. Oh, Galarian slow bro. Got the Mega Man Buster. So how about let's do a? I don't know. I don't know which one's heavier, slow bro or Primarina. We'll just try to knock out Primarina. Because that's the one I'm scared of. What? Yeah, I was not expecting that. I've never fought against a Galarian Slowbro, and I've never played the Sword and Shield DLC, so I have no idea what that... Uh... What that thing is. Alright, that still knocked out most of the damage. Okay, so how about... Oh wait, I have Lucario. Totally forgot about that. Why did I bring out Lucario? For some reason, I just saw Ice Punch and I was like, Oh wait, super effective. And then I realized, oh wait, we're not fighting Drayton. Whatever. Mm. Let's uh, go with... Or sphere any good? We're just gonna just gonna go total knockout with this. I don't know. Oh my goodness!
Okay. Rock smash. That did not do jack. Oh my gosh. What is happening? And it knows flamethrower? Okay. Uh... Actually, you know what? From the very beginning, I should have brought out Ghirardelli. Screw it. Good thing I saved right before this. Wow, our first save scum. Okay, Galarian Snow uh, Slowbro is psychic poison. Oh, okay. I did not know that. All right, let's choose better Pokemon this time. And let's speed through the the match or the quizzes. Only this game didn't take a million years to load. All right, so Ghirardelli, we're going to send out first so we can have it lay the toxic spikes on everybody. And then we'll swap it out. Well, we'll have Yowie hands in this uh, second spot. And we'll save Lucario for the Drayton fight. Which means... We have for Monosodium. Um, I need to move these guys up here. The ones that need to be trained. And these suitable fighting candidates will put over here. Ones need to be trained. Oh my god, the stupid controller. I hate the Nintendo Switch Pro controller so much. You need to be trained. Go to you. Yeah, I guess we can bring you down here. Gunch, I guess we can also put in here. Cosmos, okay. Let's move these guys over into box six. Alright, Yowie Hands can kill Primarina with Thunder Punch. Okay. Ooh, lay them out twice so they're badly poisoned. I totally forgot that that's a function of Toxic Spikes. I may be having someone higher leveled is better. So I guess Hopper over Lucario. Yeah, we'll save Lucario for the Drayton fight. Yeah, I think this is fine enough. Right, but it won't affect Galarian Slowbro, though. But that's fine. We'll just knock it out somehow. I'm pretty sure Ghirardelli can take care of that. The Drayton fight is going to be hard with your setup. I know. I know it is. Especially because I don't have any Dragon-type Pokemon. I guess we can capture those Pokemon on this stream. I suppose. And do some training. And that would mean that we've got one more... Wait, he doesn't allow traded Pokemon on our team? What do you mean? Oh, like, Pokemon that are traded over from... into this game? Like, because most of my Pokemon have been from Pokemon Home, and then put into this game, so... Oh, you can use your team after the test. Okay. Get this. 
over with. Just the cheeks. Ugh. I only want you to use Pokemon that you caught from this game that you caught yourself. Okay, then. In that case, I literally cannot use any Pokemon that I have right now. So I have to reset and use an entirely new team against him. That's really annoying. Uh, what are the... What's his trial, though? I don't care about being spoiled. Just let me know what his trial is. Just so I can prepare for it after this battle. Is it more just of fighting? Is it more fighting? Is that it? No, his gym challenge is catching a team and fighting three. Oh, okay. Okay, for sure. So we use the Pokemon that we catch. Uh, so his trial is just, we ditch our own team, catch Pokemon, use those Pokemon to fight, and that's the end of the trial. Then once the fight against him starts, then we can use our own team. Am I... Am I, uh, correct in that? Uh, am I... picking up what you guys are throwing down? Okay, cool. That is the case. Right, in that case, then yeah, we definitely do need to choose a... Uh, new team of Pokemon to hang out with. I mean, I guess it would just be... I don't know, what Pokemon... What Pokemon team would be good to fight Drayton with? Because I think this is going to be the first time where I catch an entire full team of Pokemon just to fight one person. to go for the tummy. Gosh, I hope I do not screw up this fight because this whole trial thing is taking so long. This is like when you're fighting Riku in Kingdom Hearts 1 and if you die, you have to watch a four minute cutscene, unskippable cutscene before you get back into the fight. I used Alolan Ninetales for Aurora Veil and Metagross. Nice, okay. I don't know what Aurora Veil vale is, but I'll try to emulate it. Is that a move? Is that an ability? Right back oh. onto the battlefield. Oh, I can just save the game here. Oh, okay. Thank you. There we go. Oh, it's basically a light screen and barrier in one. Oh, okay. Oh, I keep pressing the freaking B button because I've been playing too much, too many games on my PS4 or PS5 controller where the X button at the bottom is select. Aurora Veil vale sets up physical and special wall, but only during snowstorms. Okay. Let's get to the fight. Alright, now... Uh, also, Alolan Ninetales has Snow Warning as its hidden ability. Cool. Alright, so let's go set up a Toxic Spikes.
or no, uh, yeah, toxic spikes. Do one of those. And then let's try a heavy slam on Whimsicott. Yep, that won't help you now. I just use physical moves. Okay. Yeah, don't forget two spikes. Ice punch. Oh, no. Uh, that's not good. The fact that Granbull moves faster than Ghirardelli. Probably should have given Ghirardelli a quick claw. Now that I think about it. Tailwind. I don't even know what Tailwind does. But does that let them move faster? Alright, I'm back. Okay. Heal on Yaoi's turn. Speed boost. Okay. There we go. Alright, so for healing on uh, Yaoi's turn, then what should we do? We should do Sludge Wave. Yeah, sludge Wave on... Oh, Sludge Wave on everybody, yeah. Now let's go to Max Potion. Here we go. Okay. Nice punch. Oh my goodness. Okay, cool. I thought Yami Hands was... Or I thought the move missed for a second. A okay, Grand Blue... Or a Grand Bull painted. I'm thinking too much about the Grand Blue Fantasy. Slow bro. Can't get poison, so we have to get knockout slow bro. Badly poisoned. Nice. Wait, what? The toxic spikes disappeared? So is it only able to. Oh, is it only able to. Wait, how does toxic spikes work then? Did it say the toxic spikes disappeared? Wait, let me see this. Toxic spikes. Wait, toxic spikes can be cleared from the field by by the moves Rapid Spin or Defog. Poison type Pokemon that are uh, that are not raised will absorb the spikes upon switching in, removing their effect. Uh Okay. Uh I mm. And it's going for Ghirardelli, of course. When did they add that effect to Toxic Spikes? Was that always an effect? Of the move? That can't be. I remember spamming Toxic Spikes a lot when I was younger. Toxic Spikes. Okay, let's go to effect. Okay, so generation four. Let's see. Uh, OK, 
Okay, if a poison type Pokemon that is also a flying type or has the ability Levitate is switched in, it will absorb the Toxic Spike and the effect of Toxic Spikes will end. Also, if a poison type Pokemon that is also a uh, that is also a flying type or has the ability Levitate is switched in, uh, holding the item Iron Ball or while Gravity is in effect, it will absorb the Spikes. Uh, let's see. I could have sworn that it always... Oh, just this gen? That, uh, poison types? Alright. Man, this game is really changing a lot. I'm getting... My brain is not ready for all these changes. Uh... How about... Uh, CT, how about the the rock type move equivalent of this? Was it stone? Not Stone Edge, but it's the. Is it Stone Edge? The the one where it's like floating rocks around the battlefield, and it digs into any opponent that's switched in and out. Did it get a similar nerf? Uh, okay, so do I use? Stealth Rocks, that's the one. I, uh, what do I use to fight? I don't know any move that is good uh, to fight against these fellas. I am so lost in this game. Gigaton. Well, I mean, Primarina is just going to get destroyed by the thingies, by the poison. I guess Slowbro. Slowbro is psychic poison, so dark type? For brutal swing, I'm gonna assume. I don't know. Screw it, let's go. And then, guess double up on Slowbro. Gotcha. Oh, I guess I can go Thunder Punch on Slowbro or Heavy Slam. And never mind. At least it'll die from Free Marina will get knocked out by the poison. Yeah, okay. Uh I think we'll be finishing this DLC in two more streams, because we're gonna spend the entirety of this stream just catching Pokemon. Oh, great. Man, maybe it was wrong that I streamed today. I should have uh, started catching Pokemon. Let's see, what's a good team to start with? Get Swords Dance on Tingaton? Uh, I don't know. So, I don't even know what Pokemon to catch. I guess we'll, we might as well just start with, start Drayton then. Which brutal swing for knockoff. Okay. Oh, hey, what's up, Kitty Fries? Had some bomb... Longanisa fries today? I've never heard of such a thing. That sounds really good. Okay, so we're gonna remember a move. Who does more damage if the target has a held item? Okay, everybody has a held item in this DLC, so that is good. All right, and let's get Lucario on our team. Let's go head over to this direction. What can we find in this area? Bunch of dugongs. Oh, what? Oh, Reuniclus and Milsery. 
Uh, Metagross, honestly. Okay. Fine, I guess we'll catch a Metagross. Okay, let's go climb all the way up here. And what is that? Sawsbuck, Golette. Oh, come on. Now, where are the Metagrosses? Oh, what is this? Oh, just the little plaza area. Well, might as well touch down and get a place that we can fly to. Was that an ice cube? No, that's just a random Minecraft block thing. Oh, Swords Dance is just a good button Tingaton can click while not clicking Gigaton. All right, for sure. And in that case, I guess we'll forget Uh, okay, wait. Uh... Are we sort by number? No, I want sort by name. There we go. That's much better. Okay. How about... I guess we have to go... Does this place have a TM machine? Also, do your Pokemon have max EVs and IVs? Uh, I don't care about EVs, or... Well, I've, I've given a lot of Pokemon the little, like, protein things, like the like the zinc and all that stuff. I've given them stuff like that, so I think their EVs are good. But IVs, I don't care about IVs. That is, like, worrying about IVs is just, like, way too much to deal with. I'm not... I don't have the time for that anymore, Sort by name. There we go. Where is... Swords Dance. There we go. What? Okay, great. I don't even have enough freaking materials for it. What else do I need? Okay. Well... I guess we'll just catch a Metagross and just call it a day. Alright, let's go find ourselves a Beldum and a Matang. This... Wait, are the thingy up at the top of the mountain here? The trial. Oh, it's over here. I have to go further up. Oh, it's over here. Okay, I see. I forget not everybody plays these games from day one. Yeah, I only just started playing this game a year after launch. I haven't even played the DLC for Sword and Shield, so it's been a long time since I've played Pokemon. Alright, this challenge should be easy, right? Whoa, hold up. My friend gets... Uh, my friend here gets in free. Are, are you sure, Dracer? The rules say... Just charge it to my account. That ought to take care of it, yeah? That's not... Okay, understood. I'll make an exception. Many thanks, my man. 
Here's my, uh, here's my champ in the making. Thanks for coming. Let's hit the battle court real quick. Uh, feast your eyes on the majesty of the Polar Plaza battle court. Nah, it's basically the, exa the exact same battle court as the other plazas, just colder. I'm a cold weather kind of guy. Not what you'd expect from a Dranga type user, right? Anyway, buddy, you came to do my elite trial, not listen to me ramble, so let's hop to it. I call my elite trial Terrarium Only Battles. Your goal is to clobber three Pokemon of your fellow league clubbers in battle. Simple enough, right? But it's called Terrarium Only for a reason. You can only use Pokemon that meet two conditions. First, they gotta be Pokemon that were caught living wild in the terrarium. Second, you gotta be the one who caught them. Unless your whole, whole party of Pokemon meets these conditions, no elite trial for you. I know I'm asking a lot, but what fun would it be if you just dipped into your vault of beefy Pokemon and cheese your way through? Your opponents are under the same conditions, so you can't be too mad about it. What do you say, bud? Ready for my elite trial? Yeah. I feel really bad because I feel like I'm backseating, like you're good at Pokemon and I just know... First of all, I'm not good at Pokemon. Second of all, uh, and I just know what to do because I just finished the DLC. No, please tell me exactly what to do because I don't know anything and this is a very hard game. I completely take back what I said about modern Pokemon being too easy. This shit... Okay, I've hit the one hour mark of, of streaming, so I can swear. Uh, this is way, way more difficult than I was ever prepared for. So oh, how about... Ooh, green Iklis. Let's go capture you, even though you're not dragon type. I just like this Pokemon. Whoops, no, not that one. Why is there no, uh, okay, well, I guess it didn't matter. Cool, I guess we got one. Plus, if you clear this trial, you'll get the method to evolve Diplin into Hydrapple. Well, don't I just need to get, don't I just need to give a, uh, a Diplin, or no, I give an, an Applin a sweet apple. Or something? Yeah, I have a sweet apple. So do I give this to an Applin? Or do I give this to a Diplin? And if that's the case, how do I get a Diplin? From an Applin? Alright, so... What level was the Pokemon we just caught? 64. Oh, that is not good. Applin, sweet apple into Diplin, and then from Diplin to Hydrapple. Is that a lot? Do I need another? Do I need like a can, not candy, like caramel apple or something? Diplin plus Dragon Cherry equals Hydrapple. Okay. Gotcha. Well, I guess let's time. Let's look for a uh, strong Pokemon. Near the top. Man, this is a very large mountain. Uh. Um, let's climb. Please, for the love of all that is good, please climb. Alright, what is this? We've got. Oh, that's just a Golurk? Yeah, that's just Golurk. And what do we got in here? Is this a good Pokemon? Plusle? No. A Crabominable. Let's see. Where are these dang Metagrosses? Ooh, what is that? Oh, that's a Snubble. For some reason, I thought it was like a shiny Pokemon. Did not mean to run into you, Minior. 
also Beldon and Metang are some of the hardest Pokemon to catch. They have the lowest catch rates of any Pokemon. Then if that's the case, then I will just keep on spamming. I will keep on spamming uh, Pokeball so I can just hope for a critical capture. Is this the peak of the mountain? Ooh, what do I get? Meteor Beam? I've never heard of that. A Trick Room setup could work. Hey, the, that's President Obama Snow. Don't really need one of those. And where is the Sting? Metang and Metagross. And Beldum. I feel like I have a Beldum already. Do I really not have a Beldum? I totally thought I got one from a raid. That must have been in my Pokemon Scarlet version. Yeah, wow, I do not have a Beldum. Ugh. Guess I can go... I don't know, should I level up some Dragon types in the meantime? I go with my Gumi and an Axew. And we'll bring in Lucario. And we'll just move Yaoi hands. Well, I mean, I guess we'll keep Yaoi hands. Anyhow. Go Curry Pond, move that over to box five. Isig, the box five. Oh, wait, what am I talking about? I can't use these because they're not caught in here. So, gotta get these ones back. Metagross, where are you? Where can it be? Let's say on the map where I can find these things. Oh, Metang and Beldum, they should be over here. I guess I could also get a Duraludon and then figure out how to evolve it into an Archaladon. Be over here, right? All right, there's a Beldum. You know what? That's good enough. All right, critical capture. Here we come. Just keep throwing great balls at this thing. If you look inside the caves, you can find a terrestrialized Metang. All right. I mean, we're just going to throw Pokeballs at this thing. So close to that last one. Beldum has the most has the same catch rate as most legendary Pokemon. And I've captured several legendaries with critical captures, so I think we're gonna be good. I don't care. If it takes, like, a million zillion turns, we're gonna catch it with a critical capture. We'll, we'll get it eventually. Right? Well, how long has this just been? Five turns? Almost 10 turns now. Man. And let's go for... Whoops, no, not that one. And let's just throw another great ball. 
Double down item in the terrarium store. Okay, we'll go get it later. One critical capture. I mean, I guess we might as well just use, uh, keep on building up the time and just get to a timer ball. Uh, efficiency. One great ball. Guess we'll do a couple more rock smashes. And let's do another one. And I think we're good for one more rock smash. There we go. And let's go throw some great balls. And that didn't do anything. Yeah, I wish I wish there was a way to count how many turns it's it's been. That would make using timer balls way more easy. Another one. Just after we're done using Great Ball, then we'll just throw a timer ball. And if that doesn't work, then I don't know. Yeah, I don't care that I'm literally throwing away Poke Dollars for this. It's fine. The ends justify the means. Oh, come on. Let's say we have four more left. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the ends just fight the memes. Exactly. Right. We've almost done 20 turns. I think we have done 20 turns because we start out with 30, or no, 23 Pokeballs, and then we used four turns. So we're almost at 30 turns for this match. All right, and that's all of my Great Balls extinguished. He's watch me catch this, and it has the worst uh, nature. I don't even know what a bad nature would be for Beldum. Do I have any moves that... I don't have anything that really... can waste turns. Hmm... And another main. We're almost out of timer balls as well. And how about let's do one last timer ball. Okay, then. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess we have to rediscover that area again. Oh man, this is probably like the worst 
stream yet. You've done like an hour and like zero progress. Man, okay. What's a good... I mean, do I even have enough... Uh, materials in my inventory to make a bunch of level up sandwiches. I think I even have that. A bunch of ham, a bunch of mayonnaise, a bunch of mustard, and I need pickles, I think. Oh yeah, a bunch of pickles. Okay, so we can make a bunch of level up sandwiches. That's good at least. And I guess we'll just go inside the mountain. Yeah, wait. Oh yeah, this area. Has the cave, I think. No. Uh, I don't know. And this game is super tough. What is going on with that golette? Right now, off to find the cave entrance. I assume it's going to be over this arch. That seems like where a cave would be. Right in this little pocket. Nope, that is no cave entrance. Uh, other Pokemon are there to catch over here that are, like, good to fight against Drayton. And it's not showing me any Pokemon. Ooh, what's- the oh, that's a mini R. I thought it was a clef key and I was gonna get excited. Because I like clef key. Oh, there is the thing. Whoa! And what's this terraform ghost type? I guess I'll take it. I don't know what's considered a good terra type for Metang. Just aura sphere. Oh wait, I forgot it's ghost type right now. Let's go Ice Punch. Okay, yeah, that's... Ooh, and it's frozen. Nice. What? Instantly frozen and immediately thawed out? You gotta be kidding me. A good terror type would just be steel or fairy. I see. Cool. Oh man, I don't have my. I don't have my. Uh. Don't have my decade, so I can't paralyze it. We'll do uh, Ultra Ball. Guess we'll just hope for a critical capture at this point. Thank God. Yeah, let's move that into our team. So let's go to boxes. Move this boy. 
here. What other Pokemon are good uh, for the trial that we can catch in the terrarium? Oh, what else there is to catch in here that's actually worthwhile? Or what Pokemon in and around this area is also good to fight against Lacey? Because we still have not beat her yet. Level it up once to evolve it. Oops. No, sort by... There we go. Look at our Metang. Use a Lapras on your team. Okay. Hammer arm. Uh, sure. This one. Can we find Lapras? Lapras would be in the coastal area, so I guess let's go there. Let's see if we can find this dang... Uh, this dang lap dance. Where is that? Even possible to catch in this area? Oh, there it is. Let's go. And let's go with a thick... No, not this one. Metagross will work on Lacey. You just need to counter Slowbro. Low kicks can use Sucker Punch on first impressions to kill. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Alright, let's go, quick ball. Oh, why is the frame rate so low? This game is running so bad. I mean, that's just the game normally. It runs like absolute garbage. Good lord. That's like... Yeah, this thing is... Yeah, let's just run. It's so slow. Come on, catch it. Well, the slow mo makes it so much worse. It being slow-mo makes me more sleepy than I already am. <sighs> oh, you son of a gun. Other times, the charm. You should go for a different one. Go, go sneak up on this one. 
Wait, level 69? Heck yeah. Cool. As if that would help. If you can sneak up on Lapras, you can crit catch. Cool. So tired. All right. So how would I crit cap? Or just go right up behind? Oh, there we go. All right. Crit capture. Yes, there we go. My gosh, it's so slow. This game is so horribly programmed. Not even this is... The sound isn't even matching up. And this game is so broken. And it's making this, the map, slow. And it's causing even the loading animation to run slow. Let's go grab our Lapras. Let's put Yowie Hands at the front. Lapras, let's go. Grab ourselves our low kicks, too. And let's see what other Pokemon that we can catch here are good to fight against Drayton and Luce, uh, Lacey. i figure out other Pokemon that we can... Oh, we can capture. Let's see, what's the... Oh my gosh, this is Route... Uh, Route... 5? The Route 5 music from... Uh... Black and White? Alright, let's go find... Let's go find out what this... group of Pokémon is. Wait, we can catch a Flygon as well. Kinda want a Flygon. Wait, do I already have a Flygon? Oh shoot, it has Arena Trap. Totally forgot about that. Alright, you're gonna die. Have a flygon? I feel like I caught a flygon earlier. Oh, I guess I didn't catch a flygon. I thought I did. No. What do you mean can't get away? I'm level 100. I will never understand what determines can't get away from a Pokemon. Because if level doesn't do it, then I have no idea uh, what does it. Right now we'll go and sneak up on this thing. If it'll stop staring at us. There you go, it's gone. It's gone five frames per second. Oh, and it's still looking at us. And how do I divert the attention away from this thing? 
Oh, and it just despawned. Okay. I guess time to find a... Oh. oh, if the opponent Pokemon is faster. Okay. Okay. Let's go try to find a new Flygon. And if we can't, then we'll just let Flygons be Flygons. Flygons. No Flygons. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I guess I'll just go back to that area. I think there's the Flygon in the cave. Go check the cave. Oh, uh, a boober. Yeah, I don't need a boober. That's such a weird name for it. Why is it called boober in Japanese? I will never understand that. Uh, no flygons? Yeah, should I just get a vibrava then? Wait, do I have a vibrava? Oh, it's a Yan Mega or a Yanma that I caught. That's what made me think I had a Vibrava. I might as well just catch a Vibrava. Where the Vibrava is that? Hey, there's that big circle of Vibravas over here. And okay, we're we just saw the Vibravas over here. There's one. No, wrong button. Okay, well that was just awful. Okay, let's go find a different Vibrava then. Stop, yowie hands. Oh my gosh. There's the Flygon. Okay. And it saw us. Great. Well, now we have to go find a different Flygon. We have to wait for that one to despawn or else... Because it'll keep on looking at us. Alright. Uh... Where to find another Vibrava and another... Oh, just gotta wait for it to de-aggro? Okay. I didn't even realize it could de-aggro. I thought this game was so crappily uh, developed that once it's aggroed, it won't ever de-aggro until it despawns. Right, my Brava. Trap Hinge. Where, where the Vibrava at? Okay. Hopefully I press the right button this time. Okay. I thought you had a whole drawer full of Vibravas. Oh my goodness. All right, quick ball. Cool. Right, let's catch another Pokemon. Let's go 
that's another thing. What? Oh, stupid little Lit Leo. Are you doing the barbecue missions? I'm not. What I'm doing is just catching a Pokemon. I'm trying to catch an entire team of Pokemon in order to level up and fight Lacey and Drayton because I do not... Like, my team is so not good against fighting them. Is Caesar good? Wrong button. I hate... I hate everything about this game so much. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, there... Let's go... Caesar. Okay, there we go. Oh, did we not catch it off guard? Okay, so we use Caesar for our battle. All right, let's see, what else? Oh, if you're always on your bike, then they'll always be alert, gotcha. All right, I think this will be our team. So, in that case, we'll go back to the Aldea region. And we'll just do some leveling up. Yeah, this stream is just gonna be... Gosh, this feels like an early Pokemon stream for me, because back when I did early Pokemon streams, it was just leveling up for three hours, so I guess we're getting, getting back onto that train of just wasting time by leveling up. I'm so sorry, everybody. I thought I was going to do a lot of progressing this stream, but I guess not. Let's just go make some sandwiches. Sandwich. A very shaky cam that's not steady. But, no. I want to just let us go into... into make your favorite sandwich. Like, see, I have it favorited, but why won't it let me just go to my favorite sandwich? I don't get it. Okay, there's the ham. Another ham. More ham. Do we get points for making it look just like the picture? Or nah? Oh, you can get sword stance with TM Zangoose fur. But the thing is, is that I think I already have enough Zangoose. Uh, fur. Because there was something that I was missing. It was like the middle ingredient that I was missing uh, for the TM. Okay, so we're gonna pack up and go. Let me go swipe the item from Weiss here. The way held item. And we're going to give it to Metagross because Metagross levels up very slowly. Wherever it was put. There we go, lucky egg. And let's go look for Blissies. Presto. Oh my gosh, we are moving so slow. No! Okay, good. Oh, Zangu, Scyther, and Gibble. Okay, that's where... That's the item I don't have. I don't have Gibble. Oh, 
All right, so there's that. We're leveling up. Go get one of these. Maybe I should just move out of this area. Because there's so many small Pokemon. Why did I do that again? At least if I do capture, I don't have a Blissey. So it'll finally get registered in my Pokedex. Alright. The battle. Wow, there's a lot of Blisseys over here. I didn't realize they spawned up, up over here. Oh, heck yeah. Let's go. Mystic Pokemon. Wow. I didn't even realize. I don't even know what it, these things mean when it tells you that it, they're the whatever type Pokemon. It's like, what? Boom Burst. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Ooh, and we got two. Two of these little axolotl-looking creatures up here. <sighs> Mako, which gen do you think has the best Pokémon designs? Uh, I'm gonna be real with you. I think Gen 5 has the best Pokemon designs, bar none. Gen 5 just hits different. And don't at me with the whole Garboder and Vanillux. I think those designs are freaking goaded. I love... Uh, well, I love Trubbish, and I love... Uh, Vanillish. And Vanillux is pretty cool. And Vanillite. I like the entire line. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Garboder, but I do like Trubbish a lot. Roggenrola is one of my favorite rock-type Pokemon designs. A uh, Ferrothorn I love. Let's see, uh, Golurk is like one of my all-time favorite Pokemon. Uh, I'm just not into the legendary Pokemon of the game. Was never a huge fan of Tornadus, Thunderous, Landorus, Cobalion, Verizian, Terrakian. Uh, uh, the My Little Pony looking one. Uh, but I do very much enjoy Victini and Genesect. Those two are very good legendary Pokemon. Let's see, what's another? What are other good goaded designs? Uh, Sawsbuck I really like. Uh, Muna and Musharna. I enjoy... And, uh, let's see. Whimsicott's pretty cool. I really like uh, Lilligant. I really like Audino. Litwick, Lampent, and Chandelure are also super based designs. Oh yeah, Reshiram's the white dragon, right? Yeah, I think... At first, I didn't... At first, I liked Zekrom over Reshiram, but the more I grow older, the more I actually like Reshiram over Zekrom. But yeah, I was never a big fan of Kyurem. Uh, let's see. What are Pokemon designs in Gen 5 that I don't like? I'm not a big fan. Well, no, I do still like the design. I like um, a Sigilyph. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's the Pokemon that looks like it should have evolved from unknown. Let's see. Oh, I'm not a big fan of Pidov and that line because it's literally just a pigeon.
Uh, Jellicent, I'm not the biggest fan of. Looks too much like the Pringles guy. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's the... It's not Barrascuta. What is the Pokemon that got a new evolution in Pokemon Arceus? That's the fish. It's it's that one. I was not a big fan of, like, the red stripe and the blue stripe. The white stripe and Basculegion look really cool. I'm just not a big fan of the original design. And let's go... Battle items, we need the ether. Oh yeah, Basculin. Okay. For some reason my brain kept going to Barrascuta, and I'm just like, no. Barrascuta was generation whatever Sword and Shield was. Generation eight. What? What's my... Wait, how do I get to my sandwich... ...effects? Here we go, okay. No, stupid Floette! Let's see... Oh yeah, Survive... or not Surviper. Superior, I think is a really good Pokémon. Not a big fan of Tepig and Tepig, Embor, and the middle one. Ooh, a uh, Duwat is like one of my favorite starter evolution Pokemon ever. I just think it it's like because I'm not a big fan of Samurott, not even Hisuian Samurott. Uh, I just think the D Oshawott, the family line of Oshawott peaked with Duwat. Hello, sword. How's it going? How much have you missed? Uh, well, in the past two hours, we have done nothing because I got my ass kicked and I've had to save scum like three times already. So right now, we're just leveling up Pokemon. So yeah, this one's just going to be a very boring stream. So feel free to play this in the background while you're doing homework or chores and stuff like that. So we're just gonna talk about Pokemon and stuff. Not even what's happening in the game. We're just, this is just gonna turn into a Zatsudan with Pokemon noises in the background. And geez, I've been talking so much then that I need to drink. My voice is super, like super screwed and effed up and my voice is so cracky. Uh, I haven't been talking at all. So my voice is so blech. <sighs> Samurai lost me when it went on all fours instead of being an actual samurai. Yeah, it's like, why did it go on all fours? I don't get that. The one time I want a starter Pokemon to, to be bipedal, and they deny us that. The two times that we wanted this Pokemon to be bipedal, and they deny us that. They had a second chance with frickin' Hisuian one, and they still screwed it up. Oh, speaking of uh, Samurai, uh, what's the evolution of the one poke Stupid Floette. Uh, what's the Pokemon that Ponyard evolves into and the evolution that it got in... Because that's a go-to design. Oh yeah, King Gambit. That's a go-to... I mean, it's technically not Gen 5 design, but it's it's a Gen 5 evolution, so that's... I'll, I'll lump it in. King Gambit is really cool. Ooh, and I really enjoy Shelmet and whatever it partners with in order to evolve into Esselgor and uh, Escavalier. Or Ex Exelgor, Escavalier, whatever those two Pokémon 
duo are called. I really enjoy those. Oh yeah, Kara Blast and and yeah. Wow, I just said the name and I already forgot it. My brain is empty. My brain is running on mad right now because this game is too hard. Oh yeah. A Selgor and Escavalier. Yeah, that's the one. Oh yeah, Shelmet. Shelmet and Carablast evolve into a Selgor and Escavalier. IDK, why but everyone draws female King Gambit with big bazongas, so 10 out of 10 design? I have never seen that. Well, looks like I need to go check Blue Sky and Twitter for that kind of fan art. Uh, let's see, what are some other goaded... goaded Gen 5 and Gen 5 related designs? We've got... We have... Okay, Electros is okay. I think it's fine. I think it's cool that it's a Pokemon that's designed after river eels and not ocean eels. So I think that's cool. But it's it's an okay design. That entire family. Well, Tynamo, I really like. Uh, let's see. And whatchamacallit, uh, I really enjoy, uh, I'm trying to remember, what's the, what's the one inch tall Pokemon? That's the spider. It's the, uh, I Elec, Elec, no, that's Elekid. E uh, it's... I'm trying- I'm not looking at you, chat. What is it called? Damn it. I'm- I'm supposed to know. It's- uh, is it, doesn't it start with an S? Sp- 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 uh, spy- sp- sp- spark- sp- uh, it's- it's, uh... Oh uh, god, it's Jaden Animation's favorite Pokémon. Uh, it's a... It's a- maybe it has a T in it? It ends in IK. Uh, it's, uh, it's a. Uh, screw it. What is it called? Joltik. I knew it! It had a T and it ends in ick. I knew it. Uh, I was so close. Oh, yeah. Excadrill is a great Pokemon design. Uh, what was the bug type Pokemon of that generation? It was, wasn't it a Supa or Sopa, Levani, and Spindle, Spindle, or, or Sudel, Sodel? No, that was Gen 6. But Lee Vanny is the evolution. So Waddle, that's what it is. And Sopa was Gen 6's. Or was that Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon? Swadloon, that's what it was. Oh, that's not doing any damage. Let's use some ether. And let's see. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Panseer, Panpour, and Pansage. Like, I, they're not the worst Pokemon. They're definitely not my favorite designs, but I think I'm starting to like them a bit more just because they're in that uh, TV show, Pokemon Concierge. I really enjoyed that, uh, that show. But I have not watched season two yet. Wait, is season two even out? I think they teased season two on Pokemon Day. But yeah. Isn't it crazy that Panseer, Panpour, and Pansage haven't been in a Pokemon game for like eight years? Isn't that crazy?
but I feel like because they were stars of Pokemon Concierge, they're gonna be in the next Pokemon mainline game. Let's see, another goaded design. Ooh, Maractus. I really like Maractus. That one's a goaded Pokemon Gen 5 design. Let's see, Maractus. Then you also have uh, our Darmanitan and Darumaka. Those are really good designs. Yes, Scallopede! How could I forget Scallopede? Scallopede is my favorite bug-type Pokemon design ever. Scallopede and Whirlipede. Venipede is okay. I would love a plushie of Venipede, but I would rather have... I would love a couch pillow of Whirlipede. I would love that. They can barely make a game without lagging how they're gonna get all 1,000 Pokemon in there. That is true. You want to know what my what my compromise to having all 1,000 Pokemon? Ditch 3D uh, graphics. I don't care. Bring back the graphics of... Or not the graphics of Generation 5. I feel like I'm... I'm uh, praising Gen 5 a bit too much. But I want to go back to the flat... And not the pixel style, but the flat style of Gen 5 and just animate everything in high resolution graphics, but just animate everything in live 2D. I think that would be really good for Pokemon. It would save on the uh, amount of data that each Pokemon model uses and live 2D is like super popular right now as an animation program. So I think having the same animation style as Gen 5, but with high res graphics, would be really cool. I would really like that. Pokemon pay Mako to make merch. Oh my gosh. I mean, there was a... There was a furniture brand that collaborated with Pokemon. And... Uh... They made... They made a uh, Sizzlipede. Like, chairs. And I really want to get one of those for my Kotatsu. But they're like $150 each and I want to buy four for my Kotatsu. My pipe dream is an Octopath Traveler style Pokemon game. I've never played Octopath Traveler. Mainly because... Okay, this is going to sound very shallow, but... I never tried Octopath Traveler because I thought the name sounded stupid. It's like Octopath Traveler sounds like a development name. Like that it, that does not sound like the final name of the project. Same thing with Triangle Strategy. What is up with Square Enix having games that sound stupid? What's next? Uh Are are they going to make a new Are they they better make a bunch of games, a bunch of RPGs in that HD pixel aesthetic, but with different shapes. Like, okay, we've got an eight-sided shape, or, yeah, we've got, yeah, eight, and then we've got three with octo and triangle. Uh, if they make a game about hexagons, then you know what, I'll buy it. Also, Square Enix. Please put Bravely Default and Bravely Second uh, on Switch. For the love of God, please do it. Because I want to play all the Bravely games. Because I've played Bravely Default 1, but I want to play... Or I've played, like, a couple hours of Bravely Default 1. And I mainly got into that game because I thought the art was gorgeous and I have all of the art books of that series. But I would love to play Bravely Default in HD on Switch and not have to go go down the emulation route. Let's see. Uh, what was I talking about again? Oh yeah, RPGs. 
But yeah. Uh Yeah, Nintendo or Square Enix, please put please put uh Rayleigh Default on Switch. Also, calling out Atlas here. Please put please put uh, Etrian Mystery Dungeon on Switch. I want that. I never got to play it because uh, I only found out about my love of Etrian Odyssey like in 2018. So by the time uh, like by by that time Etrian Odyssey uh, Mystery Dungeon was out of print on 3DS and it you can't even... Okay, the, here's the thing that I hate about the Wii U and 3DS era of video games. It was like Wii U, 3DS, and PS3 is that they would have listings for games on their eShops, but they would say physical cartridge or physical disc only. It's like when I was first getting my PS3, I wanted to get the From Software game 3D.Game Heroes, and I was so happy to see it on the PlayStation Network store. But then it's like, oh, physical disc only. It's like, then why do you have this listed in your store? Same thing with Etrian Mystery Dungeon on 3DS and Wii U. First of all, why do you have 3DS games on the Wii U eShop, Nintendo? Stupid. I hate you. Second of all, why have it on the 3DS eShop store if you can't even download it? And it just says physical copy only. I hate Nintendo during that time. I hate the games industry during that time. But then again, I hate it even more now. Uh, but yeah, I want entry in Mystery Dungeon, or I want a new Mystery Dungeon of any property. Yo, how's it going, Kaijuzilla? I think... Honestly, I would buy a Near Automata Mystery Dungeon. I would love a game like that. If only Mystery, mystery Dungeon games weren't copyrighted. Like, legally, you cannot make your own Mystery Dungeon game and, like, have the title Mystery Dungeon unless you have uh, Chunsoft develop the game. Which means, like, no wonder there haven't been many Mystery Dungeon games besides Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. That must seem very annoying. Ooh, if they made Dragon Quest Mystery Dungeon, I'd buy that. Or actually, a Persona Mystery Dungeon... I would also very much like. But then again, isn't that just Persona Q? On another note, uh, Atlas, please put Persona Q and Persona Q2 on 3D or on Switch. And let's see, what other things should be on Switch or get a Mystery Dungeon game? Let's see... No, I still think Nier needs to be a Mystery Dungeon game, or should have a Mystery Dungeon game. That'd be really cool. Let's see... Oh, my pipe dream. This is gonna sound so far-fetched, but I would love a... a like a, a Transformers or a Kamen Rider Mystery Dungeon game. That would be super cool. I'd like that. I just like Mystery Dungeon games. Those games are really good. I need to play that on stream. I need to get Mystery Dungeon DX. Wait, how many... Okay, we've got five more minutes of this one, and then we got to make another sandwich. Oh, these guys are almost leveled up to where I want them to be. I kind of want to play Einhunder again. I have never heard of Einhunder. What is Einhunder? Well, by with my very limited knowledge of German, this means one-handed. So I guess it's a sword fighting game. Ooh, Einhunder. Okay, this looks cool. Whoa. I was not expecting a mecha game. That looks interesting. Okay, I'll have to definitely research that. Let's see. Einhunder is a scrolling shooter developed by Square for the PlayStation console. It was released in Japan on November 20th, 1997. 
Interesting. I will have to look at gameplay of that. That looks really cool. Ooh, two and a half dimension side-scrolling shooter. That reminds me, I really want to play Strider. Uh, that's a game that I've always wanted to play ever since I saw it being played on Game Grumps. Because it mainly interested me that Strider himself is a 2D sprite, but everything is like 3D. I really love 2D sprites on a 3D environment. Uh, so, of course, that means I really want to play Klonoa because I've never played Klonoa before. So, and one of my favorite indie games is called Here Comes Miko. And that game, uh, your main character is in a 3D world, but uh, it's essentially, it plays like Banjo-Kazooie, but everybody, uh, everybody is a 2D drawn character, like a flat thing. And you know what? I think my love for that aesthetic came from watching my mom play Parappa the Rapper. I just like 2D character designs interacting with the 3D world. It just looks nice. That's also... Wait, played the demo back when the game magazines gave away demos. That's also how I found out about Toomba and Medieval. Ooh, yeah. That's one thing kids these days will never experience. The joy of demo discs and demo cartridges. Man. I used to love subscribing to PlayStation Magazine. I mean, that's how I figured out... That's how I got one of my... Uh, that's how I got, like, one of my crushes in video games. Is that I played the demo disc that had Sly Cooper on it. And that demo disc also had Wild Arms 3. And that's when I fell in love with Virginia Maxwell. I still need to play that game. I only just discovered... Like, I literally... One day, I was just trying to figure out... Because I had that demo disc only for a little while. Because it was my cousin's demo disc. And for the longest time, I think for... For... 15 or 18 years, I just didn't know what Wild Arms 3 was, and I was just trying to remember, okay, what was that demo disc? Where can I find this demo disc? What game was it on that demo disc that I remember uh, being super enamored by this one anime girl? But yeah, then I found out it was Wild Arms 3, like, two or three years ago, and I've just never played it. I have it on my PS4, though. I do want to play it on stream one day. But yeah. But yeah, can you blame me for falling in love with Virginia Mas Maxwell? I mean, she's a freaking short-haired anime brunette with a purple dress. That's like everything I like. I mean, I like a lot of different stuff in anime women. Freaking, that's the only reason why I played Tales of Exilia when I was younger, because I thought Mila Maxwell was really hot. Man, two anime characters that I really enjoy, and their last names are Maxwell. Ladies or gents, if your last name is Maxwell and you're anime, then I might be in love with you. Oh, 30 seconds. Uh, no, Vivillian. Oh, did you guys hear about the Mike Tyson boxing Jake Paul? Yeah, Jake Paul's gonna die, so, I mean, uh, nothing of value will be lost in the world. So, yeah, that's gonna be good. And have you seen the training videos of Mike Tyson training? Like, right now, he is looking like he can kill, kill a man. Jake Paul is going against Mike Tyson? Yeah. It's crazy because Mike Tyson, like, normally uses a freaking cane to walk around. So it's like, why would you fight him? But then again, I guess Mike is getting into the swing of things. <laughs> Literally. Uh, now, with his trainings, though. But yeah. I cannot wait to not watch the fight. And instead, just wait until the day after to see the results. Because God knows I am not paying to watch that fight.
Also, did you know that some movie theaters play, uh, like, boxing matches and stuff? Because I just drove by a movie theater one day and they were having, uh, freaking. I went to go see Dune again and... Uh, they were showing off a, like, a UFC fight, and I was like, what the heck? Since when do theaters show frickin' UFC fights? So yeah, that must... Uh, if the ticket prices aren't that bad, maybe I might go see Jake Paul and Mike Tyson in theaters, if that's even in theaters. That's a unique experience. Well, maybe then again it might not be that entertaining, because I'm pretty sure it'll just be a bunch of 12-year-olds throwing drinks at the screen. And stuff, so maybe that's not a good idea. Did you get the popcorn bucket yet? No, I did not. So the thing is, I think I mentioned this before, but AMC theaters uh, have popcorn buckets. And I only have like local non-franchise movie theaters near me. So we don't really get anything. So it's just like shit. I have to drive like an hour to go to the nearest AMC theater to get that. A do nussy bucket. It's like, I'm kind of tempted, but at the same time, it's like... I, If I'm driving an hour out there, there's no guarantee that they even have it in stock. So, I don't know. Plus, what am I going to do with the do nussy bucket? I've got nothing... I don't have... Uh, I don't have appendages to butter it up, you know, and make use of it. It'll just hang on my wall. Do not the do nussy. Not even from the website? Wait, can you order movie stuff from the website? Oh, I guess I should have looked on AMC. I mean, it's probably sold out by now. But yeah. Uh, oh wait, I need to go to Picnic. I forgot I need to be off my Pokemon and then do a Picnic. Yeah, they sell out fast. I'm, uh, online. Make a sandwich. You've run out of picks. Wait. Where do I buy more picks? Pokemon experts, where do I buy more picks for... Uh, picnic stuff? Are they just at deli stores? You can torture your action figures and put them in the Sarlacc pit. That is true. It's so funny hearing people say, Oh, uh, Dune is just copying Star Wars because of the sandworms. It's literally just a Sarlacc pit. And also the giant space worm on the asteroid in episode uh, 6 when Han and Leia and Chewie are on that asteroid and they're trying to take the Minox off the ship. And it's like, um, Dune, Dune the book came out in 1965. Star Wars came out in 1977. Star Wars got the idea of sandworms and stuff from Dune. But yeah. Ooh, a TM that I never got. Ooh, CT, you're you're a big Star Wars person? Alright, I'm a big Star Wars person. What's your favorite piece of Star Wars media? And why is it why is it Rogue One a Star Wars story? Or Clone Wars? I'll take either answer. Specifically the last season of Clone Wars. That one was pretty good, except for uh the episode that involved Ahsoka. Because I hated those twins because they were freaking annoying. Clone Wars guy? Heck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh. These picks. Wait. I didn't even realize that there were different picks. Okay. Let's see. Do these picks do anything? Or are these just for taking pictures? Oh, your name is CT1, like a clone trooper number. Oh, I see. 
Ahsoka hate. Hey, I don't hate Ahsoka. I just hated those, uh, those like underground twins that she was helping out in the last season of Clone Wars. They were just super annoying, and I hated that storyline. But yeah. Uh, what's a good. I guess I'll just buy one of every pick just to see what it looks like. Uh, the one with the F-Boy uh, cut, right? Yeah, I think they both have the Zoomer Broccoli cut. If, if my memory serves me right. Which, wow, they were way ahead of the game, because that... Uh, the last season of Clone Wars came out before the Broccoli cut was popular, right? But yeah, those characters, very annoying. I do not like them. But yeah. Star Wars is cool. I like Star Wars, except for the time where I didn't like Star Wars, which is right now. Because I did- I only watched two episodes of Mandalorian Season 3. I stopped watching Star Wars TV shows after Obi-Wan, even though Rogue One is my favorite Star Wars thing frickin' ever. Besides Star Wars Republic Commando, I still have not watched Cassian Andor. I, I need to get on the Cassian Andor series. And I have... Yeah, I've essentially watched every piece of Star Wars media except for Rebels, Ahsoka, Andor, and the rest of... Uh, Mandalorian Season 3. Oh, one has the Zoomer broccoli cut, and the other has the female hacker cut. I see. Alright, so... Yeah, let's make a picnic. Let's make a picnic right in the middle of town. Okay, well, telling me I can't do it. You guys see one dude correcting tiles for each Star Wars movie? Oh, correcting titles for Star Wars movie. I have not seen... I have no idea what that is. <laughs> why is... Why is your favorite thing the Star Wars Christmas special? I... I actually don't think I've ever seen the Star Wars Christmas special. And then didn't they do a new Life Day special for Disney Plus? I know they made a Lego set of it, but I never saw that either. Don't bother Disney's trying to marvel up Star Wars. Yeah. I've heard... I was talking to my coworkers who like Star Wars, and they were saying that the Ahsoka show wasn't that great, especially considering that they're uh, doing the world between worlds shtick. Which is like, I can't believe they're freaking multiversing up my Star Wars. If they're going to multiverse up Star Wars, they I just want them to do a Star Wars what if. What if Jar Jar Binks was actually a Sith Lord? Please make that into a movie. I would watch the frick out of that. Andor's a great follow-up to Rogue One. I see. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, let's go with the gold pick. I've seen the Christmas special. It's better than Last Jedi. All I know is that Chewbacca's... Chewbacca's grandpa is like like a uh, a door-to-door door salesman comes into Chewbacca's house and gives his grandpa like a VR headset in which he watches like... He watches like a... Uh, I just dropped the pickle. He watches, like, a, a, a provocative dancer on the thing. And it's like, oh my gosh, you just gave this man a meta quest and a subscription to, to Orange YouTube Premium. 
Why is this in a Star Wars thing? Uh, did you watch Star Wars Visions, the anime Star Wars? I watched season one of Visions, and then I've seen half of season two of Visions. Yeah, season... Yeah, when Trigger did a Star Wars episode, directed by uh, Hi Hiroyuki Imaishi, which was uh, The Twins. I love that episode. That episode's so freaking good. But honestly, I think besides, like... In, in my friend group, I'm just known as the trigger person. So it's like, of course, I, I love uh, that uh, short. But I also really do like the one short where it's the... Uh, what's it? I mean, I like all of them except for the, the one where it's the chibi... The chibi Star Wars characters that was done by the studio that animates Naruto. I wasn't into that one, but I liked all the other ones. Uh, it was the... I really liked the one where it was the girl and the bunny. The bunny girl. Like, the literal rabbit girl. She was really cool. Let's see. And then for season two of Visions, I really enjoyed the one... It was the Korean animated uh, one, which was animated by Studio Mir, who... If you don't know that studio, they are the ones who animated My Adventures with Superman, uh, Voltron the Legendary Defender, and Legends of Korra. So there's that. Uh, CT1, there was a season two? Yes, there was a season two. So season two is all about non-Japanese uh, studios. So they had two... Or no, so they had a Korean animated short that was really good. That's the only one that people ever talk about. Uh, let's see. They had an Indian animated one. They had one... I think they had a couple from the UK. Uh, but yeah. Why aren't... Why aren't the... Do I need to make another sandwich? Did I really mess it up that bad because I dropped a pickle? Uh, did you see the one episode of Steam Universe uh, with Guest Border from Trigger? Uh, I have not. So the thing is, is that I love Steven Universe and I have friends who love Steven Universe. I have only watched up to season three of Steven Universe. And even then, for season three, I've only watched up to Beach City Drift. Or no, that was the episode I didn't watch. It was the episode right before Beach City Drift, so I never got to see the Trigger episode. But I've been meaning to go back... I've been meaning to go back... Uh... Uh, and watch all of Steven Universe. All right, I have, I have to concentrate on the sandwich. There we go. Okay. But yeah, so Deep Rock Galactic has been my copium for the a very past two weeks I've had. Nice. Oh man, I wish you guys heard that. I just did a very deep burp. Hey, how's it going, Papa Lofi? We're just doing some Pokemon... Uh... Pokemon... Training right now. Yeah, let's go pack everything up. And let's go... And fight some more blissies. I mean, I haven't watched Steven Universe in a hot minute. Still remember all the songs, though. Yeah, I I still have all of my music 
because I have the entire soundtrack up until, like, all the music from season one and season two. So, and I love that. Giant woman. Like, my favorite. And, uh... Let's see, what's another one? I really enjoy... It's the one where a pearl is training Connie. Uh, how does that song go? Uh, let's see. I can't remember. Why is it that whenever I'm on stream, I just can't remember music? Yeah. Yeah, do it for him. That one's, that one's a really good song. That's a... I'm just replaying this song in my head because I'm trying to remember how the lyrics go. Yeah, that's a good song. Let's see. Uh, let's see, Love Like You, which is the ending theme for Human Universe, right? Uh, yeah. The trick is to pre pretend you're not on air. I can't do that. It's hard for me to pretend that you guys aren't watching right now. Plus, if you guys... If I was truly not... Uh, if I was truly pretending I was not on stream, then I would start singing, and my singing is very bad. You guys would not want to hear that, and I don't mean that as like a... As like a, oh, this is what a humble person says. No, my singing is actually awful. I'm, I'm legit tone deaf. So, uh, yeah, it sucks. I'm not going to torture you. I'd have to get to a very high follower milestone in order to do a, to sing just a little bit. Oh, your last two weeks from work have been rough. At least you get to chill out and hang out with, uh, Without, uh, with the robots over here, we can just chill out. Yeah, Stronger Than You is a good one. Man, remember when the internet blew up when Stronger Than You, or at least, at least, uh, Tumblr did, which felt like the entire internet, because, uh, I was on it, and I remember seeing a lot of YouTube, uh, covers and fan animations of it, and, yeah. Wouldn't it be easier to do while the viewers are small? I guess, but... No. Yeah, Stronger Than You is what made you a Steven Universe fan? Yeah, honestly, so... Uh, at that time, I just heard of Steven Universe as a show. I was just like, okay. This is kind of around the time where I'm growing out of Cartoon Network cartoons. So I never watched, or I didn't watch a whole lot of Clarence, didn't watch a whole lot of Adventure Time, didn't watch a whole lot of regular show, but I knew of the shows. And Steven Universe was one that was just like, okay, I'll tune into an episode or two. But then I remember my brother, my little brother was uh, just watching the premiere of that episode. And I was just sitting down watching it. And I was like, once I saw the transformation or the the fusion, or I guess uh, Ruby and Sapphire unfused and becoming fused, I was just thinking, man, this is actually a goaded show. How many times have I said goaded this stream? Oh yeah, that's what got me into the series. Yeah, Andy Rodney, uh, you and I are the same because it was around that time. That was like the last era of cartoons that I watched, like to the end. I love Flapjack. I love Chowder. Uh, that was around the same time Symbiotic Titan was out as well that I loved. If you say goaded one more time, I'm calling the wizard to make you goaded too. Oh, like, turn me into a goat? 
Craig and the Creek was good. I've heard Craig, Craig of the Creek was really good. And from the little clips of it, it looks really good. Same thing with uh, OKKO. Okay I've always wanted to watch OKKO. Okay Ooh, Kids Next Door. That one's a a really good show. I really enjoyed it. Too bad Galactic Kids Next Door never saw the light of day. Gosh. You guys... Uh, here's, here's a test. Do you guys remember that episode of Kids Next Door? You know the one. The one where number two is investigating his uh, school. Yeah, that episode. Yeah. That one's... That one's quite the episode, isn't it? That episode still scars me. Yeah, Kaijuzilla, you know the one. Yep, Alex Gonzo, that is the one. The uh, the Pink Eye episode. For those of you who don't know, Kids Next Door... When did Kids Next Door come out? That was like a 2004 cartoon. And there was one episode where one of the characters was eating some, like, pie. Or no, it was a crumble. It was like a crumble cookie or something like that. And he was trying to figure out why a bunch of middle school students were uh, disappearing from class. And throughout the entire episode, he's just munching on this cookie. And then he realizes uh, he stumbles upon a secret a secret room inside the cafeteria. And turns out a bunch of kids were put into like stasis pods because they were infected with pink eye and they got eye crust. And there's a machine that scooped off the eye crust and put it onto the crumble cookies. And that, those were the cookies that number two was eating the entire episode. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that visual. Mako, stop, I'm gonna puke. Yeah, that was... It was not a good episode. I mean, it was... I, I think it... If it weren't for the gross-outness of the episode, it would have been... Like, I think the episode was written fine. I like mystery stuff, so I rather like the episode, but uh, yeah, just the whole concept of that Kids Next Door episode was just, uh, yeah. Oh, you just got back, Zark. Uh, well, you know that one episode of Kids Next Door. We were just talking about that episode. Yo, what's up, Razor Sketch? How's it going? I just learned that Billy and Mandy had a Dune episode where Mandy ate cinnamon instead of spice. What? No way. Was there really a Billy and Mandy Dune episode? Oh my gosh. Alright. I need to pay attention to... Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> In detail. I think I've grossed out enough people on this stream. Let's see, what's another gross episode of a kids' TV show? I mean, I think... I think last stream we talked about the Invader... No, two Pokemon streams ago. We talked about the Invader Zim episode where Zim was stealing organs from other students. I also learned that Maxwell Adams, the creator of Billy Mandy, is autistic. Well, that explains a lot of the humor. That explains it all. <laughs> Maka, did you also watch Teen Titans? Of course. My birth year starts with 19. Uh, or sorry, my manufacturing year starts with 19. Of course I watch Teen Titans. I am still... Uh, well, I'm upset that we never got season 5 of Teen Titans. But at the same time, I'm not upset at Teen Titans Go. Now, crucify me if you want... But I think Teen Titans Go is unironically a really funny show. I think it is like 
the kids version of Family Guy. It's just some of the jokes are just they hit really hard and I think people hate Teen Titans Go more so the fact that it was just inescapable at that point and that it was not Teen Titans the continuation. People were more mad about the concept of the show rather than the show itself. Because if you if you've ever watched Teen Titans Go that that sh that stuff is like really funny. I will defend that show to the death. However, I will not defend that the show was played way too often. Like, I will agree that Cartoon Network gave it way too many time slots. But yeah. Although I never watched the Teen Titans Go movie, but the uh, clips that I've seen of the movie are really funny. Ooh, Static- oh my gosh, Moriarty, Static Shock, that was a great show. I loved that show. Uh, Static Shock had to go out of its way to get permission to even use Superman crossover episodes. Man, that's so stingy. Look, Teen Titans Go is fine, but I hate what it stands for. Cartoon Network tried so hard to make another Teen Titans Go that they killed Powerpuff Girls and Ben 10. Oh man, remember the reboot of Ben 10 and the reboot of Powerpuff Girls? Those were awful. You want to know what we need? We need a new... A new Ben 10 show. Because I feel like Ben 10... Is like... Like if you're... If your birth year starts with a 20, then I think Ben 10 is like, oh, so many, so many, I, I, I was going to say boys, but now, now it's so many men just love Ben 10. And I feel like a new Ben 10 anything would do very well. Look, I'm not that into Ben 10. My little brother was into it. So I was like, okay, I think Ghost Freak and Upgrade are cool. Diamond Head is kind of hot. Uh, let's see, 6-6 six, six was really attractive, Vilgax is kind of hot, but it's like, oh, Generator Rex is also really hot, I, I will say that. Uh, it's so funny, if you're, I, I know so many men who enjoy Ben 10, and around the same time, I know so many women who love Generator Rex, it's like, wow. Uh... Us women who like Cartoon Network, we just knew what knew what was good. Generator Rex was freaking hot. Uh, but uh, yeah, a new Ben 10, anything would be really good. I feel like a, a Ben 10 movie, or no, no, not a movie, a Ben 10 TV show, like live action TV show, would do very well. I think. Yeah, like just have Ben 10. Uh, what's, what's the Warner? Uh, what's the Warner Brothers streaming service? Is it Max? So I think a Max TV show, uh, of Ben 10 would be really good. But yeah, I need to rewatch Generator Rex because I never... I don't remember a single storyline of Generator Rex besides the crossover episode it had with Ben 10 Omniverse. Look, Gwen, you just have to treat a car like you treat a woman. Go on. No. I feel like I may have said something wrong. What a goaded... Oh god, I said it again. What a fantastic... What a swaggin... Uh, clip. That's so funny. It makes me wonder, did any... Who who won? Because remember when Ben 10 Alien Force first came out, there was a competition of who would own a Dodge... Uh, or no, a, a, a Chevy Camaro, but in green. Like, there was a raffle or something, a competition, 
where some kid would win that car. And I'm just wondering, where's that kid now? Does he still own that green Camaro? How would you finish that tr that thought? Treat a car like you treat a woman. Well, the thing is, is that this is coming from a car person. So if, if Kevin was going to finish that sentence, it would have been like, you got to take very good care of it or something, right? Oh, Dodge Challenger. That's what it is, not a Camaro. Yuri Lewenthal playing Ben 10, Sasuke, Spider-Man. He has the keys to my heart. Uh, don't forget that uh, Ben, uh, Yuri Lewenthal also played Simone in Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann. Don't forget smoke in Mortal Kombat 1 nowadays. Oh, really? Yeah, I have no idea what Yuri Lewenthal voices nowadays. All I know is that he's in very... Oh, wait. Uh, Yuri Lewenthal is also 9S in Near Automata. Yuri Lowenthal is on his way to at least becoming a Halo Flood tier hive mind. Yeah, all all of the Yuri, Yuri Lowenthal characters are just going to come together in one big crossover and take over the anime voice acting industry. Then again, you could also say that about our our boy Johnny Young Bosch, aka the Black Power Ranger in season two of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, who has voices in anime such as Leo Fotia in Pro Mare and uh, Ichigo from Bleach. And I forget who else they voiced. Oh shoot, uh, yeah, he's Lelouch from Code, from Code, uh, Gios. Totally forgot about that. Oh, you stupid Floette. I have still, to this day, never watched Code Geass. I will say, though, the Nightmare Frames look neat. I think it's kind of weird how small Nightmare Frames are. Because when it comes to Mecha, I like Mecha that's, like, really big. Not Pacific Rim level big, but, you know, like, standard Gundam big or Mazinger Z big or, you know... So that's why it that's why Code Geass is like a mecha anime that I haven't finished. Oh yeah, also the main kid in Eureka 7. That is true. Is it pronounced Eureka 7 or are we pronouncing it the English way, Eureka 7? Let me actually look that up right now. Let me read the katakana. Okay, let me see. Oh yeah, it is it is legitimately pronounced Eureka 7. Interesting. I've only ever watched one episode of Eureka 7, and I've only ever seen one other screenshot of it. And I was like, wow, that is just a Denny's. That is straight up a Denny's in Eureka 7. I think that was a really big Tumblr post, actually. Back when Denny's had a... Uh, the official Denny's account was just posting unhinged posts. Oh, Maka, you probably only need to grind to... Level 80? Okay, gotcha. We'll just grind up. Yeah, we're almost up to level 80. So once Flygon is at level 80, then we'll go. It's okay, I was mad about it. Yeah, when the one episode I saw, which I think was the first episode, it didn't really grab me. I like I like the visual and the concept of a robot surfboarding in the air. I think that's really cool. And I've seen a lot of pictures of 
of Gundams doing it. Like, I remember seeing one fan art of the Gundam G cell from Gino Reconquista doing the Eureka 7 pose. And there was that one episode of Gundam Build Fighters Try where the turn A Gundam uses a a surfboard or its shield as a surfboard, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah. Ooh, I saw a Diamond Volt video where he was reviewing bootleg stuff. Uh, bootleg Ben 10 stuff. Ooh, I have to watch that. Okay. I, I think I can assume everyone in chat currently... Uh... ...identifies as male. And as such, I would like to know what are your guys' uh, favorite Ben 10 alien? As I've said mine, I really like Upgrade. Uh, well, my favorite, my number one favorite is Ghost Freak. But I like Ghost Freak, Upgrade, and I think Big Chill. I think I'd say those are like my top three. But yeah. What what alien do you like? Oh, I also like Cannon Bolt. Cannon Bolt is a classic. Uh, what are the names of the aliens? Let me go. Uh, let me see if I can remember all the alien names. Uh, Wild Mutt, Gray Matter, uh, Swamp Fly. Let's see. Heat Blast, Diamond Head, Four Arms, Upgrade, Ghost Freak, Accelerate, and what's the fish one? Rip Jaw. Okay, so I've got the first the first ten. And then additionally to those ten, there was Cannon Bolt. There was another one that they introduced in the first season. It was like a wolf one that's kinda hot. Yeah, there's that. And then for season two, we've got Humongosaur, Swamp Fire, Big Chill. I can't remember what the flying one was. Astroglide. Let's just go with that. That sounds like it would be it. Uh, then we've got... Alien X. Was he part of the 10? Then there was... I forget. Wait, let me tell you something. All right, Moriarty, what are you going to say? I think that was just Ben Wolf. Oh, yeah, Ben Wolf. What a stupid name. Oh, yeah, Echo Echo. That was supposed to be the gray matter of the group. Okay, you guys got some good choices. Cannon Bolt, Accelerate. Yeah, those are those are good ones. Wrath from the light uh later half of the second series. Okay, let me see. Okay, wait. Uh Ben 10 Wrath. Which is that character? Oh, the tiger! Okay, I know that one. That one's a cool design. I love I love how the uh, the character is voiced by uh, John DiMaggio. Who, if you don't know, John DiMaggio... Uh, I don't know why I said, said it very French. John DiMaggio is the voice of Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War and also Jake the Dog from Adventure Time and also... Bender from Futurama. Oh yeah, and uh, Way Big. W Way Big is also a really cool season two alien. Makes me wish Mar Marcus would yell more in Gears. I've never played a Gears of War game. Gears of War was very much my little brother. So yeah, I had access to all three Gears of War games. I just never touched it. I think the closest thing I've ever had to, to interacting with anything Gears of War related is the fact that my little brother's Xbox controller was that red Gears of War one. And anytime my Xbox controller was out of batteries, I would just steal his.
Oh wait, and also I I remember watching Gears of Awesome, that Ego Raptor cartoon. Yeah, and aren't the bad guys or aren't the good guys in Gears of War, aren't they actually the bad guys because humanity is uh on the locusts planet first and the locusts are just trying to get the humans out because it's their planet rightfully so and humanity is just like conquering it it's very much a hell divers 2 sort of like situation where you're very much the the fascists and it's supposed to be a critique on it right Oh, but no one is a good guy? I see. Wait, regular sword, wait. Oh yeah, I remember there's uh, the episode where Ben 10 found out that Wrath's species actually wore clothes and Wrath was just naked all the time. <laughs> oh man. What, what a goat. I keep saying it. My brain has been infected by Zoomerisms. Uh, Wrath is just built different. Oh, Gears. Uh, the Cogs are totally fascists, but the Locusts are exactly as vicious as they come off to be. I see. I see. I'm sitting in the bisexual pose too much. My foot is asleep. And I've got to switch feet. Or switch legs. I mean, Ben gets the best version of an alien, so I guess the best version of Wrath didn't feel shame. I say cracked a lot more. That's Zoomer slang I've been saying now. Well, I feel like cracked has been a thing to describe something as cracked or to be cracked at a game. I think that's been in internet vocabulary at least for a couple years now. I say it from time to time, even. But yeah, I, I think for, when it comes to zoomerisms, uh, yeah, I think Goaded is the one, is the latest one I use, because I don't think, well, no, I think I could use Riz. I think I've been using Riz here and there, not as much as Zoomies would, but I don't think, I think where I cr cross the line is, uh, using Gyat as a as a synonym for rear end. I don't know, it doesn't suit me. I, I can only say it ironically. But yeah, we should all bring back... We should all bring back 90s slang. Like, if something is really cool, you don't say really cool. You say that's hella tight. And you describe things as fat, but with a PH. We should do that. We should bring that back. Skibidi Gyat. Yeah, shake your Gyat for the Rizzler. That's so Phantom Tax. Faux Rizzle. That's. I totally forgot Faux Rizzle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It was like. It would start out as Faux Rizzle, then it went to Faux Shizzle, right? Ah, uh, my foot's asleep. My foot's asleep now. My foot's in sleep mode and I can't wake it up. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna have to deal with this pain. All the static electricity in my leg module is just firing off right now. Yat does not mean God. What are you talking about? What you talking about? I still say hella. Honestly, I I try to incorporate that more in my uh, vocabulary. 
faux shizzle dizzle up in this bizzle. So long as we don't go back to 90s surfer slang. Yo, so tubular. So gnarly. Wait, Mako, get your nose wet. It'll help wake up your leg. What? What does that mean? What do you mean by that? Oh, 11 seconds. Let's beat this fella. Oh, you mean Californian slang? Oh, yeah, I guess it is just Californian slang. Ah, uh, my foot. I live in SoCal. That slang never left. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, what other... What other surfer slang is there? Oh, I'm trying to... I, I'm bringing back the... I'm bringing back the... The hang loose. I like the hang loose. That's, that's very surfer. Well, I guess that's not Californian surfer. That's mainly Hawaii surfer. But yeah. Uh, should we make... Should we make another sandwich? I think we're ready to fight. No, let's get Flygon up to... Well, do we have enough? Flygon is 87 or 78. Let's see if we can give Flygon some more uh, pokey, pokey candy. Yeah, that's enough. All right, let's go off to the DLC. I'll give Flygon the egg. Oh wow, I thought Flygon already had the egg. What am I doing? Uh, where does this go? There we go. Oh yeah, radical. That's also a word. I always associate radical with uh with the teenage mutant ninja turtles has anyone seen the new teenage mutant ninja turtles movie i need to see that it makes me wonder if they would ever say riz or yat or refer to phantom tax in that movie because they got they got like actual teenagers to voice the kids in that movie, so they were speaking very natural with all the slang and stuff. Uh, one last Gears of War tidbit. So the climax has the analog for the oil, for oil turned out to be very cancer-inducing a planetary scale. And the locusts were the main victims of mutations until it also started mutating humans too. Jumping from the locusts to humans, so the series justifies the initial destruction of the locusts because the conflict left no time to find a resolution to save both sides. Oh, I see. So basically, if the Halo series ended with the elites being killed off to save humanity from the flood, man. But yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, not the Nickelodeon TV show, because I really like Rise of the TMNT. I meant uh, TMNT Mutant Mayhem. Yeah, that was a good movie. Felt more like young teens, not grown men playing 17-year-olds. That's very good. Because when you see TMNT, you usually completely ignore the fact that they're teenagers. And you just want them to act like adults. Uh, but yeah. They did use Riz in the new TMNT movie? Oh, heck yeah. I love that. Alright, I guess... Oh yeah, we need to go to the DLC. I know we talked about it uh, this morning, but maybe give either Street Sharks or Extreme Dinosaurs a try for 90s slang. I have always wanted to watch Street Sharks. So maybe 
Maybe I can find a place. Maybe I can hop aboard my uh, my spaceship and sail on an ocean of some kind and plunder some ways to watch street sharks. All right, let's go. At a gross. All right, CT1, you're going to help me out here. What are good move sets for Lapras, Metagross, Flygon, and Caesar? Let's go with Metagross since it seems like this one. Uh, this one. Yeah. So, what should we what should we do, fellas? Ooh, SWAT cats. I've always wanted to watch SWAT cats as well. I guess I can because it is Disney Plus, right? It's a Disney Plus show, or is it? Or is SWAT Cats a Fox Kids TV show. I don't remember. Maybe I'm mixing it up with Gargoyles, which I know is a Disney show. Are you doing Drayton now? Yeah, I'm saving Lacey for last. Oh, SWAT Cats was Cartoon Network. Okay. I see. Yeah. Let's try to figure out what good moves are to do. Wildcats is probably not any, not on anything streaming right now. I see. Well then, uh, yo ho hoi. In that case, Lacey Laska's best girl. I just realized every single one of these areas, they all are, they all represent a season. And because of that, all of these areas have the seasonal version of the Route 5 or whatever Route um, song this is from Black and White. That's clever. Oh my goodness. I like that. Metagross needs Bullet Punch, Psychic, and any setup move. Don't use Heavy Slam because Metagross has a Light Metal. Wait, does my Metagross have Light Metal? Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. So, a Psychic Bullet Punch. So, we need to get Bullet Punch. All right, let's get Meteor Mash out of here. All right, so... What can I rearrange? Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's see. So, setup moves. So should I use Bone Claws? Or I guess I can go with Zen Headbutt as well. I guess Zen Headbutt and and Hone Claws. For now, I guess that's what we can use. Just from what I have right here. Right, then we'll go with. Oh wait, we don't need Zen Headbutt because we've got Psychic. Or I guess we do because we've got a high attack... Uh... Attack stat. Alright, off to Lapras. Uh, okay, so... Gotta have an Ice Beam. Right, then... Let's see. Focus itself and allies in mist. That sounds like a good idea. And life do. Yeah, let's bring in life do. Now let's go. Maybe confuse Ray. Maybe. Yeah. 
and mist, I suppose. That seems like a good one. Lapras needs Thunderbolt or Freeze Dry to deal with water types. Okay. Uh, Thunderbolt. I have it with me. I do not. I probably don't even have the materials for it anyways. I guess we'll just go with Flygon now. So I guess we'll do Dragon Dance. Real gamer strat to defeat water types gym is just to drink all their water. Oh yeah, overhydrate. Alright, so... Crunch, Dragon Dance for Flygon. Okay. Crunch. Yeah, become Sponge. Yeah, we need a Sponge, a Sea Sponge Pokemon. What is this? What is Boom Burst? I've never heard of this move. User attacks with destructive sound. Lose Dragon Rush, it misses too often. Okay. Dragon Rush has been lost. Don't we have a Sea Sponge? I don't think we have a Sea Sponge Pokemon. Yeah, I don't think we have one. Let's see. Mm. I kind of like Sand Attack. We can be total... Total... A holes and just lower the accuracy of everybody. I think I might keep that. If if uh if sand attack doesn't really work, then we'll go swap it out with Dragon Claw. Alright, now for Caesar, okay. Uh Uh, oh, you need a dragon stab? Oh, okay. And in that case, I will get dragon claw. And just as a heads up, I've never used Caesar. I've never had a Caesar in my team, and I have no idea what it could use. What would be a good uh, move set for this creature? Uh, so I think having Swords Dance is very good. That up here. Is today's stream the moveset building stream? Yeah, this is all the setup stream. Wow, we're, we've been at it for three hours already. Alright, so... How about... Ooh, we can also do double team. Uh, it just needs bullet punch and you're good. Okay. And let's go get bullet punch. Ooh, sharply raises defense. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, screw having a bug type movement here. I just noticed what's playing in the now playing section. Heck yeah, didn't you know that we're playing the, the sequel to freaking Pal World? The sequel is so good that it jumped, uh, then it jumped the second entry, and we just skipped straight to three. Ooh, uh, give Caesar a fire berry. That is a good idea. Do I have any fire resistant berries? I do not have any fire berries. All right, so let's go into the battle.
Oh, uh, a lychee berry also works. Okay. Let's go with the lychee. Let's go and give it to this dude. And any other battle item I could give to these fellas. Floatstone reduces the weight of the holder. The icy rock. Snow will persist longer. Let's see. Nope, nothing else. In that case, I'll just give these to just random Pokemon. Here, I'll give you to Metagross. And Icy Rock, I'll give you to Lap Dance. And that'll be it. Lead Metagross and Lapras. Gotcha. All right. There we go. Which berry would y'all want to try eating IRL? Uh, I've always wanted an orange berry. But I imagine it's a mix between orange and blueberry. Ooh, and lepa berries. Lepa berries always looked kind of good to me. It's like a mix between a cherry and a lychee. Or cherry and a peach. What do you say, bud? Ready for my elite trial? Let's-a go. That's your cue, underlings. Come on out. Oh, don't forget to toss Yowie and Hopper. Uh, well, I didn't catch any other Pokemon here, so... We're just gonna go at it like this. Uh, rather stroll around the terrain catching Pokemon first? No problem. So go on, get out there and chill it up. Good luck, everybody. Give this your best shot. Oh lord, the English localized Pokemon games don't filter out the word yaoi. Heck yeah. Ready to trial it up? Let's go. Oh, whoops. No, oh, get... Okay, I thought that you wouldn't... That they would automatically take the Pokemon out of your box. I didn't realize that. Uh... There we go. No. There we go. Cool. Let's fight. Wait, isn't Pal World 3 when they added the rare gun pal that has all the Rule 34 artists drawing crazy bazongas on it? Yeah, I think that's the one, actually. I think you are correct. Whoa! I was not expecting those two. Oh, this is a great remix. Uh... These are both... Okay, Bastiodon is... Rock Steel, and Rampardos is Pure Rock, or Rock Ground. Uh, I assume it has high defense. Double up Rampardos. Alright, I assume both of these have very good defense. So, uh, maybe we should go with Special Defense, or a Special Attack. And then Ice Beam on Rampardos. Ooh, nice. Okay. Yes, there we go. Oh, it's not super effective. Interesting. Ooh, yeah. We got this in the bag. Oh, now we need to do regular Psychic. Last game that had difficult Elite Four was like Black and White 2. I think so. I think you are correct. Because I remember not having a super hard time 
uh, destroying uh, Sun and Moon. And I remember beating uh, beating X and Y really easily. I remember beating Sword and Shield very easy. Yeah, I think it has uh, it, the last time there was a super difficult battle was Black and White and Diamond and Pearl. Cool. We beat Craig the Student. Your Pokemon are like gems. Which gems uh, Gen 8 didn't have in Elite Four? I mean, they they did kind of. They had the top four strongest trainers, which would which was the professor and the other whoever the last four people of the trials were. She was like uh, the last four trainers in the or the last four totem trainer trial captains. Toa. Uh, they were... It's the golf girl who was flying type. And then wasn't it the fairy type artist? And then other people, I think. Yeah, they, they kind of had a thing. An Elite Four. In spirit, they did. You know Iono, the streamer? I use the same type of Pokemon as her. So, like, ready for a shock? Sure. And we got this in the bag. I think. I think it's funny that Sun and Moon are some of the easiest if you play normally, but some of the hardest to Nuzlocke. I've never actually tried a Nuzlocke challenge before. I would like to. Which Lapras with Flygon? Gotcha. Okay, so... Magnezone is very much a special attack. Or a special defense. So let's go Zen Headbutt. And let's go swap out. For Flygon. Oh, headbutt Zeb. Okay. I'll do that for the next... For the next one. Yep, that checks out. Oh no! Okay, Zen Headbutt, Zeb Strika. And then should we go... Oh, we can't do Earthquake. Should we go Dragon Claw or Crunch? Or I guess Dragon Claw because it's a stab move. Okay, yeah. Nice. Cool. Sick. Right, so I guess if we do psychic, will that do a bit more damage? And I guess we'll just do Dragon Claw again. EQ is safe. Me uh, meta has high defense. Okay, but doesn't Magnezone have Levitate? Oh, I guess it hits. I did not realize that. Huh, I always thought that entire line had levitate. Alright, so now let's go heal everybody up. Go give everybody these little potions. I want to use them all first. Nope, wrong one. There we go.
Uh, they don't have Levitate. It has Magnet Rise, which is a move that makes it immune to ground moves. Huh. Interesting. Okay. I'm quite the cool customer. Ready to shiver? Sure. Alright, I think this is a good time for a, a hydration check, everybody, and shrimp check. I've been shrimping, like, the past 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. Water, air, fire, dirt, frickin' magnets. How do they work? Okay, I unironically actually like that song. I think that song is frickin' hilarious. Alright. Let's see. Sand Slash and Dugong. Switch lap with Caesar. Gotcha. And then Pokemon, Caesar. Oh, that didn't do a whole lot. Oh no. Okay, that didn't do a whole lot. Nice. Sword stance? Sure, why not? Okay, that's good enough. Hello and Sun slash how I love the great Sonic S design. They need to make a shadow equivalent or a silver or more something. What is the shiny color for? Alolan Sand Slash. I don't even know what the shiny color is for normal Sand Slash. Now just bullet punch spam. Okay. Nice. Cool. Hooray! We've done it, chat. With just four Pokemon. I can see why Drayton likes you. Ooh. Is he trying to be our boyfriend? I don't think Carmen will enjoy that. So that makes... Let's see. One, two, three... Nice! You went and beat all three of them! Which means this elite trial is elite complete. All right, my league club assistants, retreat on the double. Aren't they great? No grumbling or nothing. Bunch of sweethearts. Okay, here's the tricky part. Get Tinkaton and Yaoi back in. Okay. Looks like it's finally time for you and me to battle. Guess you're still using the party you put together for my challenge, huh? Go ahead and take a sec to change it up. Unless you want to dive right into battle? No. Okay, so... My team. So you want Yaoi hands... back in. And you want... a Teflon back in. Alright, and Curry Pawn. Who do you want Curry Pawn to swap out for? Did I swap out for Caesar? Uh, but yeah, I don't know what to swap out. Hmm. What should we swap out? Caesar has served its purpose. Gotcha. Alright. And then you want to lead with Yaoi hands and uh, Teflon here?
Or we want Yowie Hands and Metagross. I'm pretty sure both forms of Sand Slash are just slightly darker versions of normal colors. I see. Oh, la uh, Lapras with Teflon. Gotcha. Cool. Oh, wait. Before we even go ahead with this, I have to do something very important. What food do I want to... Never mind, I already have the name. There we go. There's one food-related name down. What? Why didn't... Wait, change nickname. Yeah, gel gelato. Is it not... Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. Flygon. What can I name Flygon? Uh... Can you name Metagross Rock Candy? You can. I will name it Rock Candy for you. Right, but Flygon. What can I name Flygon? What kind of food does Flygon look like? I got it. There we go. There we go. Galleon. And Metagross, let's go to Rock Candy. Okay, what are your guys' opinions on Rock Candy? Because I gotta say... Rock candy is one of my favorite candies ever. Especially the Japanese rock candy, which is a uh, konpeto. That's a really good candy. I love that stuff. I love the texture of eating rocks. D tier? Excuse me, Geo. That is some good stuff. I love rock candy. Thank you, Subway Free. It rocks. Dang right, it rocks. Oh my gosh, Ignis, give it a C plus. How dare. Oh yeah, Pop Rocks are really good. Ready to take me on, bud? All right, it's on. Okay, here we go. We've spent three and a half hours training just to fight Drayton, so uh, let's hope it pays off. Mm, here should be good. You know, I was thinking about the look you get when you're in battle, and I realized I've only ever seen you like that from the sidelines. Yes, now I know what it feels like to face you from across the court. Let me be real. I'm counting on you to conquer this whole barbecue league, bud. I mean it. I need you to pull this off. You really gotta come through for me. That said, I'm not just gonna roll over and miss out on the fun, so watch out. But no need to get all official or anything. Just battle me normally like you would anybody else, Mako. There's 100% Dracer truth. I'm so psyched I'm uh, I'm so psyched I'm practically tingling. So why don't we get this thing rolling nice and easy. Let's go, bud. Show me a good time. Honestly, if his design was a bit more... ...exciting, I think... Because, like, out of... I really like his uh, personality. It's definitely husbando material in terms of writing. Uh, but I wish his hair was a bit more interesting. Or his face was a bit less sort of normal. He's got a very Saitama face. Yo, how's it going, Soul Star? Welcome to the stream. All right, times four. Oh yeah, this this Flygon is absolutely cooked. How does his hair do that? I have no idea. Oh, that didn't do, Jack. 
Whoa, not, not a lot of types of moves make me eat a super effective hit. Oh no, Earthquake. Oh, Teflon. Imagine your Tinder date telling you that you have Saitama to your face. You might as well just end the date right there. Might as well uninstall Tinder right there. Okay, Sceptile. I guess we'll do some... Wait, should I do life do? Uh, Ice Beam, the dragon. Gotcha. And then I guess we'll do knockoff for Sceptile. Okay, there we go. Now we can swap out Teflon for Curry Pond. He looks pretty handsome when he locks in, though. Yeah, he does. No, gelato. Do not let the set pee at all costs. I have no idea what that means. Oh. Uh. Rock candy? Oh, don't let them set up at all costs. Okay. Alright, so let's go Torch Song, Septile, and you. Uh. Or. I think Metagross will be on. Well, no, it's Ghost type. Hmm. And I've got a higher physical attack. No. Come on. What's my summary? I have higher... Yeah, physical attack. So we'll go with Zen Headbutt instead. At all. Zen Headbutt. Oh, set up with Hone Claws. Gotcha. What is that? Thunder Punch. Oh wow, a crit. Of course. Nice. Alright, one more hit. Oh no, what is that? Sharply boosts attack. Oh no. And special attack? Okay. Attack Rose. Accuracy Rose. Cool, cool. We'll do another Torch Song. And then we'll do... A Zen Headbutt. For Dragonite. Or... What's this one? Always goes first. Oh yeah, I can, I can do Bullet Punch instead. Let's go. Oh god damn it. The, the latency for the stream. I'm always catching... Your uh, CT one. I'm always catching your your messages like right after I uh, input it. All right, but now I know to use Zen Headbutt for the next hit. Oh, hello, Haxorus. Ooh, okay. Now this... ...is getting a bit dicey. Double up with Haxorus. Okay. So... I assume Shadow Ball. And then we're gonna do... ...Zen Headbutt with Haxorus. But it's just pure Dragon type, right? Oh no, Curry Pawn. Oh, thank you, Curry Pun. <laughs> Ooh, nice. All right. 
then headbutt. Let's go. And then does he have one more Pokemon or a couple more? Kingdra. Oh my gosh. Time to heal. Yep. Max Potion. A Kingdra's water type. Uh, so it would knock out Hurry Pond. Are we saving Metagross? I'm going to actually wait this time. Uh, yeah, Curry Pond hanging in there with the one HP. A uh, switch curry. Gotcha. Oh, curry. Let's get you out of here. Flygon time. All right, we'll let Flygons be Flygons. Max Potion. Metagross. ECT1. Uh, do you find it strange how you're commanding me, much like I'm commanding these Pokemon? Do you feel like, like I am your Pokemon? I'm your little VTuber inside a, inside a Pokeball that you, I'm, I am, it's almost like you're playing this game. It's just through proxy. Yeah, chain of command. All right, here we go. Now, should we do, probably do Dragon Dance. Yeah, we'll set up with Dragon Dance. I feel like Brock on the side. And then, Dragon Dance Sweep. Okay. And, let's see. But, who is going to be the biggest problem? I think Kingdra is probably a bigger problem, so we should probably focus on that one. I'm just going to go just by instinct. Oh, n yep. Okay. Well, at least that did half damage. That's good. Yowie hands. All right. It's all up to you. All up to you, buddy. We got it. Oh, wait. Thunder Punch? This Dragonite is Dragon Flying. Oh, and Kingdra is also Water type. Let's get Kingdra out of here. I want revenge for my buddy. Yowie hands got to lock in. Oh my gosh. Man, everybody's using Tailwind. Uh, thank you, Yowie Hands. Ooh, okay, almost there. Archaladon. I don't know what this Pokemon is all about, though. I've never seen this one. Oh, wait, I can just use Drain Punch. Bring Punch, because it's Dragon Steel. And we'll go Bullet Punch with Dragonite. Now watch this dragon's blood boil. Take control, Archaladon. Oh no. Oh boy. Okay, good thing it hit Yowie Hands first. Bullet punch. Yes. Alright, now we can double up. Okay. Oh, Terra Yowie. Whoa, that looks... That's a really cool animation. I like that. What the heck? Oh, does that kill me a little? Well, it's not like I needed the heal. Oh my gosh, it, it has defense raised every single turn. What? That is OP as frick. All right, Curry Pond, you're out here. All right, 
right, so for and use I don't know. Uh inflicts damage equal to the user's level, so this is a hundred percent or hundred power. Twenty five. May leave the target with paralysis though. Terra Drain Punch, okay. Cool, and then we'll go heal up uh, this dude. Oh, it raises its defense every time it gets hit by a move. Okay. Let's go, yelly hands. Destroy this man. Oh my gosh, Curry Pond was n didn't even stand a chance. Oh no. And the defense rose. Cute. Seismic toss. I have to treat you like Gimli. I must toss you. Oh my gosh, we did it! Oh my, oh my, oh holy moly. Oh, jeez, Rick. Uh, all of these battles have been so close. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'd give Drayton a smooch. I would. He's a good guy. Man, that, that was ridiculous. So much fun. I knew inviting you to the uh, barbecue club was the right move. And I guess if you can beat me, we better make you a full member, finally. What do you say? Ready to be the real deal? <laughs> Bless you and your generous heart. Come on, let's get a photo of you for the club roster. Oh, I like that pick. That's a good one. Lacey probably would have wanted a more serious photo. She might not be thrilled, but oh well. I feel like there was one more thing I'm supposed to do. Oh yeah, we gotta give TMs to whoever beats us Elite Four members. I gotta grab that. Wait here a sec. <laughs> that little goofy run animation. Sorry for the hold up. I'm back. That's three of the Elite Four you've trounced now. Seeing how far you're getting is making me sweat a little. Here's your reward, like I said. Ooh, dragon cheer. Yes, thank you, thank you, everybody. But honestly, you shouldn't be congratulating me. You should probably be congratulating CT1, considering they're the ones uh, essentially running this Pokemon stream right now. Without your help, CT1, uh, I would not have been able to take him down as easy. Sweating bullets in the booth. No wonder it had such an effect on Kirin. But enough about that. I guess our Elite Four match is going to be against... Or your last Elite Four match is going to be against Lacey. She's no pushover, I'll tell you what. She's no pushover, I'll tell you what. But you ought to be able to take her, bud. See you soon. Show us what you got. Cool. And everybody is dead except for Yaoi hands. Yeah, CT1, you and I are like your ratatouille, just as Sword says. Alright, now let's go make our way to Lacey. Our second girlfriend. Or I guess one of seven girlfriends.
Okay, where is the healing station? There it is. All right, CT1. I just... The only thing I need from you... You can take a, a little bit of a rest. Oh, you'll be back with the Lacey strategy? Okay. Well, just let me know what Pokemon I should have in my team. Out of the ones that I have here. You know, just let me know which one. Uh... Yeah, just let me know which one needs to go. Where? Don't you want to get a Hydrapple? I will get a Hydrapple later. Uh, I don't even know where you can find Applins. I kind of want to shiny hunt for an Applin. Because I really love caramel apples. Oh, the Kitakami Apple Field. Okay. Alright, so while CT1 gets us our strategy, let's go try to find... Uh, where the apple field is. Uh, let's see. Oh, Apple Hills. Here we go. Now, does anybody know, how do you shiny hunt? I'm not actually going to shiny hunt right now. I'm just going to go catch a Hydrapple. I'll catch a bunch of Hydrapples, or I'll catch a bunch of Applin, just to get a good, just to get a good one. Or is it better to get, uh, yeah, let's actually get some items first. Hold on a sec. Oh, is there no Pokemon? Uh, or, wait, no, there's a shop right there. Let's go over. Yeah, let's buy some stuff. Yeah, let's get a bunch of nest balls. Because, uh, shiny Hydrapple is, uh, caramel brown and green. And nest balls are brown and green, so we will just get a bunch of these. And just catch a bunch of, uh, Hydrapolin. Complete the Paldea decks to get the shiny charm. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's gonna be kinda tough. I think I'll have to do that, uh, off stream. And I'll probably do that while on the plane ride to Sakura-Khan. Let's see. Let's go get ourselves where... Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I think I have something. Let's get Caesar back here. Oh, wait. We didn't name Caesar. Uh, where's Sakura-Khan? Sakura-Khan is happening uh, Friday the 29th. 30th and 31st of this month. And it's happening in Seattle, Washington. So yeah, I'll be there. I will be at a friend's booth. And the friend is actually in the chat right now. Uh, and I'll be boothing with uh, Geo over there. We don't know what booth that we're going to be in. So I'll probably post on Blue Sky uh, what the booth will be. But yeah, if you want to check us out and buy some merch, then, uh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Okay. But, yeah, let's name our Caesar. Oh, can you see the box again? Yeah, so... Yeah, CT1, take a screenshot here. This is the box that we're working with. Uh, let's see. I... Just not this row. This row is full of, like, lower-level Pokemon. These ones should be all good. The bottom two rows. Or except for Luxray, I guess. 
There we go. Now the bottom two rows are all good. Well, it's, actually, let me move everything upwards for you. Yeah, the top row are, are the ones that are not fit for battle. Now let's get these ones down here. Yeah, Cosmos can also stay. All right, so... Itakami Mons are about 71. I know. I know there are 71. That's why I bought... Because Nest Balls work better on, like, Pokemon level... Like, under level 10. But that's why I got a bunch of them, just so that we can get a critical capture. Because I want to... Get these Applins to breed a lot. All right, Caesar. Let's... What's a food name that Caesar could be? Hmm. What food does a Caesar look like? Salad. Caesar salad. Ooh, that is a good one. That is a good name. If he's steel, you can call him chopsticks or spork. I like spork. Or, wait, he's got tongs for hands, so why not just tongs? I mean, it's not a food, but it's food related, so I think we'll go with tongs. Hey, you can go grab my food for me. Alright, so let's get. Tongs is in the front. Let's go have him remember a move. All swipe. There we go. What is Flygon's Terra type? Uh, let me check real quick. Flygon's Terra type is ground type. Alright. Apple Fields. A spinner rack. We got a. We got a. Apple. We got a apple. You've been out all day, so I'm late, but I'm here. Hey, no problem. Who bug terror type? You're gonna hunt nimble. Wish me luck. Nice. Good luck on catching that nimble. Alright, so I assume we're gonna. Uh, keep Flygon in our team for our fight against Lacey. Ooh, you're at the arcade with friends. Nice. What is your go-to arcade game, Red Toad? Ooh, Crazy Taxi. Nice. My favorite go-to arcade game is a, a little rhythm game that nobody plays called a Waka Reverse. Probably the best rhythm game I've ever played. I love it. That is my jam and my jelly and my butter and all other condiments, my chicken salt, my cupy mayo, light gun shooter gang. Oh yeah, if my arcade had House of the Dead 1 and 2, I would be playing that all the time, but my local arcade, the only real, the only light gun game that they really have that I enjoy playing is uh, Time Crisis. Uh, I don't know what Time Crisis they have at my local arcade. I think it's Time Crisis 4? Or it's definitely one of the newer ones, where they have a left paddle and a right paddle.
What is this? Bug bite. Okay, you have cooked, CT1. Uh, give me the rundown. Uh, what should my team be made up of? Where are the Applin? Where are the stinking Applin? I want more. Oh, that's Time Crisis 5. We don't talk about that one. Really? Oh, there's Applin. I'll swipe. Check out the out, uh, southeast corner of the Kitakami map. Okay, will do. There we go. And now that I have a male and female uh, Applin, they can breed. Ooh, your arcade is mostly old school stuff. Nice. I like that. I'd love to visit an arcade that has the old uh, Alien vs. Predator beat-em-up, because that's one I used to play with my dad. If you find a shiny uh, nimble in a... Uh, or if you find a shiny nimble, which Pokeball should you catch it in? Uh, well, what Pokeballs are there? Ultra Ball, definitely. Because it's common rider colored. Because zero one is uh, black and yellow, so. Okay, so Teflon, Swords Dance, and Heal while not clicking Gigaton. Ampharos kills Primarina. Flygon kills Slowbro and Excadrill uh, by tearing into ground type. Fill the party with strongest member. Okay, so we are good with. We'll have Teflon, Alien, Yaoi Hands, Rock Candy, and we're just swapping out essentially Tongs and Curry Pond. So we'll go with Ampharos. And. Yeah. And I think these are the next strongest members. So I think we're good to go. Nice. Let's go capture. A little bit more. What is that? Oh, that's a Sopa. Yeah, let me just capture some more Pokemon in here. I'm just gonna go quick ball in. Ooh, level up Ampharos as well. All right. We shall go level up some more Pokemon. Uh, let's see. What time is it? It is... Uh, almost 11 o'clock. You know what? I can go stream for another hour. I can do that. Alright, let's just go capture... I'm just gonna go capture a bunch of Pokemon here. And we can also talk to Perrin uh, after we catch a bunch of Pokemans. Because we actually haven't exchanged many words with Perrin. Which is why I haven't made a thumbnail of me making out with her. Ooh, and another Applin. I'm just going to be catching a buttload of these. Uh, let's capture Repeat Ball. Next thumbnail for sure. Now my next thumbnail is going to be making out with Lacey. I've already decided. But maybe the thumbnail after that. Alright. Ooh. Let's go capture the Sentret. Man, I love Sentret. I would love to have a big plushie of it. Oh, we actually watched all the Omega Mart trailers like a month back. That is true, yeah. We did watch all the Omega Mart 
uh, trailers. That one time I did a uh, media reaction stream. I forget what episode... Episode. I forget what stream that was. Wasn't that the Darth Vader Lego stream? I feel like that's what it was. After we built the Darth Vader Lego helmet, we watched the Omega Mart commercials, and then we also watched the Nagai Sakurugumi commercials, aka the Long Long Man. Mako, have you taught Maridon how to fly? I have not. I don't know where to go for that. I think you ate a Long Long Man on stream too? Yeah, I did, and I think Long Long Man is probably the most 4 out of 10 candy ever made. But yeah, next time I go to a Japanese supermarket, I'll have to buy the apple flavor uh, Sakurugumi. Too bad they don't make uh, Nagai Sakurugumi in different flavors other than really crappy grape. Let's get these out of here. Ah, uh, I hate the D-pad on the Switch Pro controller so much. Son of a gun. Okay. Now let's go grab this item. Let's talk to Perrin. Let's see how many... Pokemon I need for her to talk to us. All right, what's up, girl? Kiddo, look, I like your gung-ho style, but it seems like you've already got something you need to do, don't you? Go and catch 150 Pokemon. I see. Uh, we'll look at our Pokédex. Oh. Only 46. Okay, that's not good. What? At least I'm like... more than halfway... or a little bit under halfway with the Paldean Pokédex. At least. Uh, but yeah, what's what's our thing? Nice. Right, then what do we got for this one? Nothing. Nothing. Everyone says Joy-Con suck, but the deep has the best for Pokemon. That is true, yeah. So we're gonna go level up Ampharos. Actually, let's do some leveling up of these Pokemon as well. So we're just gonna do... Uh, actually, let's go buy some Quick Balls. Yeah, we probably won't fight Lacey this stream. But we'll probably do that next stream. Just because we're, we're probably... I think I've got only, like, one more hour of streaming energy in me. Uh, let's go... Go... No. Go 99 of these. Or no, let's go 100 of these. Uh... But yeah, we'll spend the entire time just catching Pokemans. And training and stuff. Alright, so now let's go to boxes. Go swap these out. Let's get Yowie hands. Oh wait, uh, Ampharos needs to stay. Ampharos. And then we'll evolve Suwaddle. No. no. God. God. Okay, we'll evolve Suwaddle. We'll evolve Bellsprout. We'll also evolve Sentrit. No! 
Oh yeah, and Poochiana. We also need to evolve Poochiana. No, oh, come on. Okay. Got a jet because my brain is shot. Good night, Mako. Good night, uh, y'all. All right, good night, uh, CT1. Uh, thank you for all of your help uh, throughout this journey and stuff. And yeah, we'll see you uh, next time I stream. And I have no idea when the next time I'm going to stream is. I think I'm all busy next week, so... Well, I guess I could do like a 10 p.m. stream on the 18th, but I feel like that's a little bit too late for me. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm probably not going to stream next week. Because I've just got a lot of work, but yeah. I'll see you whenever. Good night. Let's go and get... I know. Yeah, let's just go capture... Pokemans. Alrighty. Yeah, I guess this will essentially just turn into another Zatsudan stream. Because we're just gonna... Not really gonna pay attention to the game. I mean, oh, you son of a gun. Oh, now I gotta. Gotta get out of here. Oh, that was a wasted Pokeball. Let's go capture something else, like this little low tad. Quick ball. But yeah, what's new in popular culture these days that we can, like, chat about? Just so that we can have something to talk about. I mean, what's the newest thing? How can I date this stream? What is the big thing? Yeah, it's kind of hard to figure out something to chat about. Hmm. Ooh, another critical capture. Alright, now let's go capture... I've seen today our invincible clips. I have never seen... Er, that's, that's a lie. I have watched Invincible. But it was just only the first episode. Because I'm not sure if you guys know, but I have a deep phobia of blood and gore. I mean, I feel like that's kind of normal. But yeah, normally I'm fine like reading it. Like if it's like a bloody manga, I can easily read it. But yeah, like slasher movies, I can't really watch. And I thought I was fine with like bloody anime. But yeah, watching the very end of episode one of Invincible, I was getting lightheaded because I was legitimately about to faint from watching that series. How'd you manage to watch Chainsaw Man then? Because it doesn't... Okay, you cannot compare Chainsaw Man to Invincible. You legitimately cannot. It doesn't get as... Chainsaw Man does not get as grisly as Invincible does. Yeah, the gore is way different. And how do we not get this stinking stinking monkey? But yeah, and plus I haven't watched I've only watched when it comes to Chainsaw Man for the anime, I've only watched up to episode six, so it's right bef it's right after they defeat the Infinity Demon. So, but I've read the manga all the way. So I think if I read the manga, then the visceralness of the anime doesn't hit as hard, you know. But yeah, I remember watching Evangelion when I was a kid, and I saw the episode uh, where. Uh, Shinji is fighting the... Uh, is it the fourth angel? It's the angel that takes over Unit 3. So, and I remember being lightheaded after that. But then after watching... 
uh, after watching the rebuilds, I was fine seeing that scene. Oh yeah, I'm just not into Invincible. I appreciate it for what it is, and I like that it's a comic book adaptation. Because I'm a big fan of American comic books. Or I like comic books in general. Comic books, manga, anything like that. I really like that uh, little uh, sphere of entertainment. But yeah, I just cannot watch Invincible. It is too much for me. Uh, what other Pokemon can I catch? Let's go catch this Stantler. Adam Stantler. Alright, so let's go and... Uh, oh wait. Quick ball. Oh yeah, the, the fight scene in End of Evangelion with Asuka. That one's also... When I first saw that, I was like, ooh, this is... I know the Avas are like... Are, are human, so it shouldn't shock me, but it's still like, ooh. Or, their Avas aren't humans, they're uh, like... They're living creatures, I guess I should say. But yeah, when... In that fight, it's like, ooh, that is very grisly, even for Evangelion. Oh, what did I run into? Oh, a Starly. What Pokemon... What other Pokemon can I catch? Oh yeah, we didn't catch an Apom yet. Uh, but yeah, I, the only, honestly, the only thing Invincible that I've watched besides the first episode, why is this Pokemon so hard to catch? Oh, well, Professor Jacques is near the bridge now, you should go talk to him? Okay, go we'll talk to him. Uh, ooh, wait, is that a Pachirisu? Yeah, I want to catch it. Ooh, and a Cricketot, we haven't caught Cricketot yet. Oh wait, we've already caught a Pachirisu, never mind. Yeah, the only thing besides episode one of Invincible that I've seen is uh, the trailer for season two, which was animated by Bobby Pills. Is that the animation studio? And they animated a series that I like called uh, uh, Pipudu. And uh, I'm not going to explain what that is series is. You're just gonna have to look it up. But yeah, I thought that was fun. That was a fun little commercial. It's like instantly... The way they animate is so... unique. Or I guess iconic. Uh... Uh... But yeah. So it's like, once I saw that, I was like... No way, that, is that that animation studio? But yeah, how you pronounce it? Uh, P-E-E-P-O-O-D-O-O. -O -O -O. Yeah, Pipudu. And yeah, it's a fr it's very much like a Newgrounds animation. It like, it feels like a Newgrounds animation in that its humor is, I mean, with the name like Pipudu, of course there's gonna be like pee pee poo poo farty humor. But it's, uh, pretty, uh, interesting. And, yeah. He also animated- oh yeah, that's right! Uh, that studio, or the dude, I'm not sure if it's a dude or a studio, but the animation was also, or the animator also animated, uh, stuff for the Ubisoft animation- the Ubisoft series, where Rayman is, like, doing drugs. And stuff. Yeah, Captain Laserhawk. Hey, you said Jox is by the bridge? Uh... Is it this bridge, or is it a different bridge? Bridge. 
bridge? Oh, is that a bridge? It's not a bridge. Where is the bridge that Jox is at? Uh, I don't know what bridge you're talking about. Hmm. All right, I guess I'll just keep going on my Pokemon catching journey. This Poochiana. No, don't need a Poochiana. Already got it. Ooh, what is this tiny thing? Ooh, this... I like this Pokemon design. This one was a good one. But yeah. Oh, you grew up... Razor Sketch. Grew up with a mom that loves zombie movies, so you're desensitized. Oh, man. Zombies used to scare the frick out of me. I used to have very vivid nightmares when I was a kid. I don't know what was wrong with me. But I remember... I remember very vividly having nightmares that were very much themed after Jumanji. Because I was always freaked out about the one... Uh, it's the one scene in Jumanji where the house changes so that there's alligators and crocodiles. So I used to always... It was a recurring nightmare as a kid that I would have... Uh, sorry, as a calculator that I would have uh, where... The floors of my spaceship uh, would just be replaced with water and there were vines along the walls and alligators. Like, I had to traverse all throughout my spaceship with alligators in, and it really freaked me out. Let's see. And then I also remember these when I was an itty-bitty little Tamagotchi, fresh out of the frac- uh, fresh out of the fractory. Fresh out of the factory. Uh, this was around the time that Star Wars Episode One uh, was in theaters. So, and uh, Dad bought, uh, being a Star Wars fan, had a uh, gave me a little, not a little, gave me a poster of Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace. And if you've seen that poster, it is a giant. It has a Darth Maul's face as the background. And the thing was, is that that poster was put at the very edge of my Tamagotchi crib. So when I would wake up from sleep mode, I would be face to face with that, with that uh, movie poster. And I would have night terrors and sleep paralysis. Or it wouldn't be night terrors, it would be sleep paralysis. So I would wake up and I couldn't move my body. And I would see Darth Maul's face just morph and stuff, and there was nothing I could do. I couldn't scream, I couldn't cry, and yeah, it... Yeah, I was scared since my first installation. I knew what fear was before I knew... Uh, before I knew how to differentiate different tastes and stuff. Yeah, I was very traumatized. Uh, thanks, Dadbot, for that. For installing fear into me. Very early on. But yeah. I never had crocs and gators, but I did have these things that looked sort of like gigantic grayish-headed frogs with huge yellow eyes and black limbs that would chase me around. What the heck? That's crazy. That would scare me as the kid. Ooh, but want to know something really crazy? I actually... So, uh, when it comes to... To sleep paralysis demons. So, Darth Maul was my first sleep paralysis demon. And I had not encountered a sleep paralysis demon for 20 years. Uh, so... Or 20 years or so, you know, give or take a couple years. But just... I think it was just last year or two years ago, I had sleep paralysis. And I actually witnessed my sleep paralysis demon. And it was very scary. Uh, so they were uh, a very tall figure. It was like a shadowy figure. Like, I guess 
it was it was a very tall, very lanky creature. And I would say shadowy, but that's not really accurate to what they were to what they were. It was more like every time I focused on my sleep process demon, they were just blurry. It's like if you took a picture of a person, blacked them all out so that they're a silhouette, then put a Gaussian blur. A Gaussian blur. I still don't know how to pronounce that word. A Gaussian blur on like 50%. So they were just like a blurry person. Very tall. Imagine the proportions of Slender Man, but all black, slightly blurry, and their head was made out of tree branches. And they had tree branches all along the back of their body. So it honestly kind of looks like the demon character from that one episode of Smiling Friends. But yeah, it was just a very blurry, all jet black Slender Man with black bare tree branches. Like, they didn't have leaves on them. They were just like, uh, they were just like winter tree branches. So that's what my sleep paralysis demon looks like. And though it didn't have eyes, it didn't have a mouth, you could... I could just tell that it was staring directly at me. Its body language was just like, oh, it's just staring. But yeah. Your parents took you to watch Piranhas 3D as a kid? Oh boy. Hmm, I could draw that. I actually have a little, uh, little stick figure sketch of my sleep paralysis demon that I... Because when I woke up, I knew I had to draw it. So I got up and I scribbled something on, like, the back of a piece of paper or something. So I need to see if I... I need to see if I can find that picture and I'll post it on Blue Sky. If I find it. But yeah. Oh my gosh, Retney. It got worse because my parents let me watch Alien Aliens. Alien and Aliens when I was like seven years old. Guess how long I was afraid of face huggers under my bed for. Oh my gosh. Man. Only thing I remember as a kid in that kind of sleep process back in my very old house. Sleep paralysis is uh, not fun. Not a fun thing. At the same time, uh, I remember back in high school, I was very much into creepypastas. So, and a lot of creepypastas and scary stuff. I, I was like super deep into horror uh, that didn't evolve gore and stuff. So I was just very into creepypastas at the time. But I really wanted to meet my sleep paralysis demon because of that. But yeah, it wasn't until... Pokemon is this? Oh, it's a Vullaby. Uh, it wasn't until a lot la later that I would get to see my Sleep Paralysis Demon, and I'm so glad that I finally got to meet it. And yeah. If I take off my glasses, everyone becomes a blurry person. That is true. That is true. If I take off my faceplate, then everybody does become blurry as well. I got to see Terminator 3 in theaters as an 8-year-old. Only had sleep paralysis once recently. Just woke up feeling like I was in immediate danger and needed to scream for help but couldn't. Yeah, it is the worst feeling. Yeah, I don't really... Gosh. I know my recent dream was really weird, but I can't remember what it is. I just remember I had a dream last week about animating in live 2D. Yeah, it was very weird. Maybe that's a sign that I need to animate in live 2D again. I need to learn that program again. Ooh, and then don't I need a leaf stone to, to get a vit victory bell, right? Reading Junji Ito at 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. was 
one of my late teen activities. Nice. Yeah, I've never gotten truly scared from a Jinji Ito manga. I will say, though, the one about the holes, that one is really freaky. It's my hole. It was made for me. All right, so let's go get that leaf stone. Oh, wait, do we not have a leaf stone? Darn. Thought we did. Well, in that case, we need to get Victory Bell out of here. Let's go get Spinarak. No, let's go get Starly. Oh, wait, we can get Volpix with a Firestone. And let's go bag. Dang it, bag. Yes, there we go. Firestone. Remember my childhood nightmare where I was being chased by Nemesis in Resident Evil 3? Now it's more like creatures from A Quiet Place. I've never watched A Quiet Place. I know that there's a prequel to Quiet Place coming out. But, yeah, I've never actually watched it. I really want to watch it, though. Oh, there's also another horror movie that I want to watch. I want to watch... Uh, Annihilation, because I loved Ex Machina, and the director is coming out with a movie called Civil War that I want to see. So I want to watch that director's stuff, and Ex Machina was so good, even though it had some scenes, or a scene that made me avert my eyes. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but I hear Annihilation also has like a very grisly scene. Uh, so I'm kind of afraid of that, but I've also heard Annihilation is, like, the closest we, we've we ever gotten, or, like, the, is the closest Hollywood has ever gotten to making, like, a love, a truly Lovecraftian, uh, movie. So that sounds very interesting, and that's the whole reason why I wanted it, because I love H.P. Lovecraft's stories. I think H.P. Lovecraft is probably the I just really like cosmic horror. That's my favorite genre of horror. But yeah. Go watch Ex Machina. That's the, that's the takeaway you guys should have. Go watch Ex Machina. I think, honestly, I think Ex Machina is more relevant now than it was when it came out. Because uh, to break down the synopsis of Ex Machina. So basically, there's this a Facebook MFer, some Mark Zuckerberg uh, dude who's played by... Uh, he's played by... Who's the actor for... Uh, who's the actor for Poe Dameron in Star Wars Episode Seven, and also... Uh, Leto Atreides from Dune Part 1. Oscar Isaac. Yeah, so basically it's about the this in-universe's version of Facebook and the creator of it, which is Oscar Isaac's character. And basically, uh, Oscar Isaac's character uses all of the data that he's gathered from his not-Facebook to create a robot. And he basically invites a random user of not Facebook to test this uh, Android and see if she's ready to for I don't even freaking remember but just this random dude's job is just to interact with uh, this Android oh it, it wasn't Facebook it was uh, not Google okay but yeah so it's just all about AI and stuff and what it truly means to be human and stuff. And uh, it's a horror movie, so it's really cool. I really like it. I, it is a very good movie, even though it made me go Ugh, at one scene, but yeah. Do we have a Riolu? I don't think so. Let's go grab it.
Oh yeah, I also need to watch... So I need to watch Annihilation. I need to watch all of the Evil Dead movies. Uh, I need to watch the Predator movies. I need to watch... I need to watch the original The Thing movie, because I've only ever seen the 2011 The Thing movie. Uh, let's see. I need to watch... Uh, what else? What other horror movies do I need to watch? I need to finish watching all the Alien movies. Because I remember... A couple years ago, I made it my duty that Halloween to watch all the movies of a certain franchise, and I think four years ago it was Aliens. So I have not watched... Uh... It was the it's the latest latest alien movie. I have not watched that. So the last one I watched was Prometheus. Oh yeah, the entire franchise. Ah yes, Alien and Aliens. Nothing else happened after that. But yeah. Uh let's see what other franchise you know, I kind of want to watch all of the... All of the... Uh... F uh, what's it? All of the Halloween movies, because I've seen Halloween 1, then Halloween the reboot, then Halloween ends, then Halloween the other one, Halloween Kills. So, and I really liked that. Honestly, even though I'm very... What's the fear of blood? Chemo. I've got, like, chemophobia. So it's like, even though I have that fear of blood and gore, uh, I honestly thought Halloween Ends was a letdown, because I thought the kills were going to be grislier. But they really... They really went soft on those kills in that movie, and I was kind of disappointed. Number two... Uh, Halloween Kills, that one was really grisly with the kills. Especially with the one scene with the firefighters. Like, I could not watch that. So, I was in the movie theater with my hands over my face. And what's also funny is that one of the dudes, or the main dude in Halloween Ends, his name is Corey. And he was just like a nerdy dude with glasses, and I just couldn't stop imagining Stamper's voice just yelling at Corey from uh, the, the Sleepy Cabin podcast. So yeah, that's what kind of ruined that movie a little bit for me, but yeah. Alien 3 was at least watchable, but then it got weird. Alien 3 was the one where it was on the prison planet, right? And the alien dog was the main antagonist. I think I zoned out on that movie because I was just very bored. I think I half paid attention to that one. But then I... I kind of liked the alien movie that came after where it was the alien that was mixed with... Uh, it was the alien that Ridley gave birth to. And it was like... it. The alien looked like a melting banana. Uh, Alien 3 felt more like a people drama than alien horror, yeah. Okay. Ooh. Hey, I'm just stumbling onto your account. Uh, don't know what to, uh, what to expect from your channel. Let's see. What, what do you, what do you people expect from my channel? A lot of Pokemon, just a lot of, I've been streaming a lot of Pokemon lately, but in future, it's more building Gundam models. I do have some Gundam models I'm prepping for stream. And a lot that I've already prepped that I need to find time to stream. Let's see, Gundam models, Pokemon, drawing. Let's see, a bunch of robot-themed games. Of course, I have to represent my kin being a robot and all. So I've got Nier Automata. Uh, I'm planning on streaming uh, the cyberpunk bartending game Valhalla. I want to stream. And yeah... But right now, we're just chilling out, just talking about horror movies as I grind in Pokemon. Oh, we have no choice to kill him. 
darn. Ah, uh, Steven, looks like we have to kill this dude. Damn. <laughs> Oil change stream? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I would be banned off of YouTube for doing an oil change stream. Me, a robot, change my oil on camera? I can't do that. That's something fit for orange, YouTube. Alright, what other Pokemon would I catch? Uh, let's get out of here. Hey, what other horror movies? Well, I guess, would you count Godzilla, Shin Godzilla as a horror movie? I think it kind of counts as a horror movie. That and Minus One are like, they're like horror analogous, right? Yeah, it's a monster. Monster movies count. Like, I think when it comes to Godzilla, uh, or Minus One and Shin Godzilla, my heart has never beat so fast watching a monster movie. Like, the, there are some really intense scenes. Like, the, the boat scene from Minus One, every time I watch it, like, chills and my heart rate goes up. That is, that is a scary scene. Oh my gosh. I love that scene. Uh, quick, give me a random robot aesthetic. Uh, d d um, uh, air fryer. Uh, make your robot girl, make your robot OC have air fryer qualities. How about air fryer and microwave? Just to give you more of a, of a theme to go with. How's that sound? Is that what you're looking for, Razor Sketch? Or are you looking for something more specific? Uh, or not specific, but more more robot centric, and not just machine centric. Ooh, a was this one Illumis? Illumise. Oh, guess more robot centric than just machine. I don't know what. Robot centric would be. Uh, like, what do you mean for robot centric? Would you mean like design motifs? Like, would you like Gundam Freedom wings, or like something spiky? Like, if I were to say real robot versus super robot, would that be what you're looking for? Because if that's the case, a uh, uh, super robot. Oh, design motifs. Okay, let's see. What's a good design motif? Uh, ooh, Starly's evolving. Hmm. Uh, she don't have... Oh, what? Oh, I'm stupid. I was... Okay, I'm dumb. Oh, Lota is evolving. Okay, I won't press B. I would say replace, like, replace the feet with heels. Like, give the robot's natural feet are just going to be heels. I think that's pretty cool. Kind of like the Nobel Gundam or frickin' Raiden from Metal Gear Revengeance. He's got high heels that are just his feet. What is that Pokemon? Oh, that's a, a Mighty Yenna. Ooh, Pontiard. Not robot per se. Well, I mean, it is a robot, but Zone of Ender's mecha with cockpits. Oh my gosh, Ignis. Ooh, Geo. Geo has a very good idea. Clear plastic casing. Yes. That's really cool. Yeah, like me. I've got clear cat. Uh, <laughs> clear plastic 
casing or just like a transparent part of the robot because my visor is transparent and stuff. But yeah. Yeah, make it make it look like an N64 or a PS2 controller. Or you can also do a little detail that super robots do. And it's that you make the boobs look like or the boobs would be missile launchers. I know that's a robot in Mazinger Z. Alright, let's go grab this hoot hoot. Ooh, interchangeable arms with different ports are really neat. That is cool too. I was thinking Gundam Heavy Arms. Oh yeah, like a big brawler. Or not brawler, a big gunner. A robot with a bunch of machine guns. Ooh, how about an outfit based off of every video game console? I would love... Uh, burped a little. I would love to draw... an outfit. Like a different... PNG model. Of like having a bunch of different outfits based off of... A bunch of consoles. I would love to do that. I need to do that. Because I feel like you guys might be getting tired of just seeing little old me with my purple crop top hoodie and a uh, cropped green shirt. Maybe I should draw myself in different outfits. Ooh, a virtual boy outfit would be really cool. Oh, that reminds me. How did you like your Makoko nut? I liked that picture. I mean, is it okay if I turn that into a V2, uh, not V2, uh, PNG model? Is that okay? If you guys haven't seen, Razor Sketch drew a picture of me as a little coconut, and I really enjoy it. You gotta add the game sphere. It's spherical. Ooh, let's go get this Dusk Noir. But, but to be fair, I haven't been tuned in for close to a month. The outfit is fresh to me again. Nice, nice. That's the silver lining of not being or, or of being away from the streams. It'll all see seem new. The PS6 is going to be a sphere, guys. Oh, yeah, what new, what household appliance is the next big video game console going to be? Because I remember when the PS3 was mocked for looking like a grill, and the Xbox 360 was mocked for looking like a space heater. Then the PS5 is mocked for looking like a like a Wi-Fi router, and Xbox Series got mocked for looking like a mini-fridge, in which they subsequently uh, made a Xbox mini-fridge. And let's see, what's the next household appliance? I think the next household appliance, the next console will be, it shall be made into a four-dimensional object. Yeah, it's a Tesseract. Oh yeah, the PS5 also looks like Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh... I think the next one will be an air fryer. I think that's what that's what the new console will look like. It'll be an air fryer or maybe I think it'll either be an air fryer or a printer. I think it'll look like one of the two. Oh yeah, the next Xbox could look like an amp. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, ooh, we don't have one of these yet. 
An Xbox that doubles as an air fryer would make the console actually useful. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, we should we should have combination consoles like the Philips console. Or no, it was not Phil Philips. It was a Panasonic. It was the CD player that's also a GameCube and it was like all silver. Yeah, I want a microwave that's also a Wii U. That's what I want. Wait, the next air, uh, Xbox will be an actual air fryer by venting its heat through cooking, uh, through the cooking parts. Oh, heck yeah. Ooh, a white stripe one of these. Oh yeah, air purifier. Uh... Yeah. Imagine a Switch that actually has tablet functionalities. The fact that the Switch does not have a camera or a microphone or anything like that. It's like, how in the frick did the DS have this and not the Switch? They need to add more tablet-related stuff. But yeah. Frickin'... Uh, what else? What else would be kind of funny? I just want the next Nintendo console to be a Wii U. I need more features. Dude, a lot of people, have you seen on Twitter how a bunch of emulators and a bunch of game devs are just making games that would seem perfect for emulators or uh, Wii U? Because I saw one Twitter post that was saying, oh my gosh, I can... Uh, emulate DS games by putting the top screen on my TV and the bottom screen on my phone and everyone's just ra not ratioing but just replying man the children yearn for the Wii U and then somebody made a indie game post where they're developing a game that uh, so it's a first person game but you're looking at a game controller and the game controller or it looks like a tablet but you're traversing the game uh, via by playing the character on the game that you're playing in game. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Uh, it's, it's a weird like second person platforming game. But yeah, and everyone is just saying, wow, this would have worked great on Wii U. Everybody is yearning for the Wii U. reckon it's going to be a tube, a tube-shaped uh, Nintendo console, or a tube-shaped something. Man. Uh, orange and black YouTube is going to have a lot of fun if that's the case. And, oh, Litwick. I want a Litwick. All right, let's go catch this thing. Platoon 1 is the GOAT entry uh, for this whole series, just for that. Yeah, Splatoon 1, uh, I will say I have Splatoon 1 and 2, and Splatoon 1 I've spent the most hours on. Because Splatoon 2 just didn't hit. I like playing Splatoon with a big chunky Wiimote. Yeah, I need to get Splatoon 3 as well. One of my friends is really into Splatoon 3, so I want it to be our new... our new girls' night game. But yeah. They're gonna revive the Ouya. What are they gonna name it? The Oh No? The weight of the tablet made Splatoon 1 nice to play? Exactly! Does this mean I just need to add weights to my Switch in order to make Splatoon 2 feel worth it?
I know how people keep saying it's going to be Switch 2, but we know Nintendo doesn't like to do sequels to consoles, so I'm guessing it's, it'll be a new console with a new gimmick. That's what I'm afraid of. Like, I'm afraid because the Switch is such, has such a big library. I'm afraid that the new console won't accept Switch cartridges. And that we'll have to rebuy all of our games all over again. But yeah, I really hope that it'll be backwards compatible to some extent. Hopefully at the very least for uh, eShop games. You know, something kind of like how the PS4 and the PS5 have. Like if you have a downloaded game on PS4, then you can just download it for PS5. I hope it's that case and I hope it's not a Nintendo case where... Oh, it doesn't matter how many times you've bought Super Mario Bros. 1 on Nintendo consoles. Once the new console comes out, you have to buy it again. Eat my ass, Nintendo. The fact that I've bought Super Mario World like five times. I mean, first of all, that's my own fault. But second of all, uh, eat my ass, Nintendo. There's also... There's also the E word that Nintendo doesn't like, which I, I already do. I already do do that. In fact, uh, when I bring my tablet to work, uh, I'm just chilling out playing Kirby, uh, Kirby Dream World, or Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. That's what I meant to say. I'm playing that. I'm playing Sonic Advance. I'm also playing, what else am I playing? A Game & Watch Gallery 4? That's like one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games. Oh yeah, emus. That's right. That's the word that Nintendo doesn't like. They don't like emus. No! Why does Nintendo hate species of birds so much because they heard what the emus did in Australia and they're afraid that if emus ever set set claw in Japan that they would be utterly destroyed I think Nintendo is the only besides Australians Nintendo is the only company that truly knows the destructive power of emus what we can get a Hatterene here no way. Where? I need to get it. I need to get this alien wife. Is that what- is that not what the Evangelions are for? You know what? True. We all know that the 14th or 5th- or no, Lilith was the 14th angel. The 15th angel would have been Emus. Ooh, there we go. We got the little hat Pokemon. Ooh, Retney, you are right. Cassowaries would have won the war even harder than emus. Cassowaries are scary. They're just legitimately dinosaurs, straight up. They are crazy looking creatures. Okay, I really want to get this Hatterene. Or Hatram character. So let's go and swap out Pokemon. Let's go get Caesar. No. Stupid thing. Okay. Ever hear what they sound like? I've never heard a cassowary scream, but I imagine it's scary. If it's anything like what a kiwi sounds like, then I assume it's going to be scary. What? Wait, did we not... Oh, wait, we... Yeah, let's go level up with Swords Dance first before we hit him with a False Light.
they don't sound like a kiwi? Oh, I see. Disappointing. Ooh, got a Trachidep, but not shiny. Nice, Kaiju. Nice. All right, let me hear what this sounds like. Let me hear it real quick. Oh, that is... That is strange. That is quite something. Wait, I'm not sure. Will you guys be able to hear this? Nope, okay, you guys can't hear that. Okay, it's not picking up on my mic. Darn it, okay. Let me see if I can grab... Be able to grab the video. Let's see if I'm able to... Oh wait, I can just turn off my sound filter off my mic. Oh yeah, filters, let's turn off noise suppression. There you go, now let me see if I can get the sound playing on the video. Let me bump up my volume. That sounds scary. It sounds like a freaking... That's... That's... That's legitimately a dinosaur sound. That's crazy. Ooh, oh no, Sony is desperate to move PS5s. $399 PS5s with Spider-Man 2 bundles? Ooh. Maybe it's almost time for me to get a PS5. Four years late. I think once it drops under $300, that's when I'll bite. All right, I'll bite. When's the PS4 or when's the PS6 going to come out? I think we are halfway into the uh, Generation 9's... Uh, uh, Generation 9 console's lifespan. I think we've got maybe like two or three more years until we see a, a PS6 and an Xbox... Xbox One again. Okay, yeah, we need an... We have an Arya dose. What does Lombre need? I don't know what Lombre needs. And we have just been catching Pokemon this this whole time. I don't even know what Pokemon I need. What Pokemon have I not caught in the mainland? Uh, and getting this shiny charm is going to be kind of tough for me. Yes, we'll just go fly around. I don't know, I'm feeling pretty aimless. Let's see, how much time do we got? Eh, I can stream for 30 more minutes. I don't mind, it's fun just... Uh, just doing... Essentially, a, a Zatsudan. They're essentially paying for better hardware in Helldivers 2. But I've got Helldivers... I can get Helldivers on PC. PC, rise up. What up, PC fellows? Ooh, I don't think I have a Sneasel yet. No, not one more hour. I'll do 30 more minutes, not a whole hour. Uh, Mako, what do you think of that giant but unic uh, Unicron figure? Uh, by that, Red Toad, which which Unicron figure do you mean? Do you mean uh, actual Unicron, as in HasLab Unicron, or do you mean the Studio Cell third-party Unicron figure? Because I kinda want that Unicron figure, not gonna lie. But it is $400. Why did they raise their price to $400 instead of $300 like it used to be? 
I would say if it was $300, maybe I would bite for it. But because it's $399.99, no way am I going to get the studio cell anymore because a HasLab one is just $500. Well, I guess in the aftermarket prices, it's probably like $1,000 now. But, uh, yeah. I've heard many bad things about HasLab, uh, Unicron, and I just think Studio Cell looks a lot cleaner, and I would rather have that figure. Because, uh, if you guys don't know, uh, I'm currently- I have a little mini collection within my Transformers collection where I collect Transformers that are on the poster for the- the Transformers, the movie, uh, 1986. So the only Transformers I'm missing from that right now is Unicron and Springer. And we're getting a Studio Series Springer this year, but I have yet to find a figure that represents Unicron. So I think eventually I might get a studio cell, maybe one of the earlier ones that's not as expensive. But then again, it's like, do I really need Unicron? I don't think I need Unicron. Uh, okay, let's go cryogonal. Cryogonal. What? Why are these... Feels like quick balls have been really failing lately. Oh, wait, do we have a bird mite? Wait, did we catch Sneasel? Man, my low attention span and short-term memory is so off. Oh yeah, we did get one. Let's go heal up at the Pokemon station. No. No. There we go. <sighs> How are we all doing now that it's midnight in the West Coast? Are we all doing fine? How are we holding up uh, right now? You guys doing good? You enjoying this little... Zatsudan chatty stream. What you guys doing while listening to me chat? Are you drawing? Are you playing video games? I think I need to get myself a little midnight snack. I'm getting a little peckish. Ah, uh, your EP. It's fun. Nice, nice. Good to hear. Getting the third iteration of your robot OC done. Nice. Yeah, robot OCs are very hard to draw and design and stuff. Yes, there we go. Critical capture. Holding up well. Pretty chill stream today. I'm playing Chrono Trigger while watching. Nice. Eating beet chips and drinking Monster. Ooh, beet chips sounds interesting. I've never had beet chips. Give me some. Please mail some over to me. Let's see, where else can we go? Ooh, Bronzong. I don't think I have a Bronzong. Ooh, I don't think I have a Cub Chew either. The only downside of beet chips is that you eat a bunch, everything comes out of you the next day, or so it's dyed a very concerning dark red color. Yeah, I've never eaten beets before, so I've never been traumatized of seeing, uh, seeing my robot waste, uh, different colors. That'd be very concerning. Oh, March has been a painfully extensive month, month for you. I'm sorry to hear that. Dang. Uh, ooh, new car. Nice. Excellent.
Where else? Have a bergmite? I think we have a bergmite. I don't think I saw it in my thing. Oh, holy crap, uh, Moriarty. I hope your sister is uh, better. Yeah, I hope they're not. Uh, hope they're doing okay. Good might. Uh, there's so many Pokemon that we're missing from our thingy. Uh, Mako, rec recommend me a Transformer to buy. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with Kingdom Cyclonus. So get yourself a Kingdom Cyclonus. Or I guess it would be the Generation Select Dark Purple Cyclonus. I love this figure so much. I've been messing... It's... Kingdom Cyclonus has been my desk toy for the past couple days. I love this thing. Oh, and what is this? Ooh, Snom. Yeah, we don't need a Snom. We have Ghastlies. Let's see if we have a Ghastly. Oh wait, sir, do you want me to recommend a Gunpla to buy? Or do you want to recommend a Gunpla to buy? How about we do both? How about you recommend a Gunpla and I'll recommend a Gunpla? I recommend... The Gundam Build Strike. That one's a really fun hit. I like that one. I would also recommend a Ak Guy. That one's also really fun. It's a very different build because it's such a fat, chunky mobile suit. But yeah, Ak Guy is pretty fun. I've been getting choice paralysis after looking at the US, uh, USA Gundam store. Ooh, yeah. If they have an Ak Guy... Let's see, what's another fun kit? If they have the RX-78-2 Beyond Global, that one's a really fun model kit. Uh, ooh, wait. I'm looking at my Gundam shelf right now. Uh, the Real Grade Zeong. That one's an amazing model kit. That's actually my very first and only real grade. And I chose a really, really weird one to start with. Yeah, I do want to eventually get a real grade Sazabi. And I really want to get the real grade Zagok. Oh no. I want to get Gunpla with cool looking effect parts, but I can't find any. Yeah, effect parts are going to be kind of hard because usually Gundam kits don't have effect parts. You usually have to buy... Because uh, Bandai actually has a line of model kits that you can buy effect parts from. It's going to be the 30 minute missions model kits and they have different effect parts that you, you can use for other model kits. But when it comes to Gundams that have their own effect parts, the only one that comes to mind is are the real grade God Gundam. Because they have the green hands. Or the red hands. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I can't think of any other Gundams with effect parts. Because usually they're sold separately. So I just gotta buy 30 minute... Missions ones, got it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, as a Gundam model builder of 10 years, or it's now 11 years because I started building in 2013. Uh, I I think the real grade uh, Burning Gundam, or actually any, any uh, Burning or God Gundams uh, are going to be the only ones with effect parts. Well, I guess that and the Master Gundam, considering that it comes with purple hands. Oh, wait. Uh, Actually, Red Toad. Uh, Yeah, so the real grade last shooting Zeong. Do get that, because I actually have the last shooting version of the Zeong. Those effect parts are crazy. Uh, So there's that. Also, the Build Burning Gundam. 
all of the build Burning Gundam variants, they have orange flame effect parts. Those are really cool. And I think the newest one, which is the, the Shin uh, Burning Sekai Gundam, I think from Gundam Build Metaverse, that's a new model kit that has, or not new, but it's a current model kit that has effect parts that you can go for. I've also been thinking of buying a new tool since I have an X-Acto knife and two blade nipper and I feel so sad when I mess up. Ooh, two blade nipper. I would say go for a one blade nipper because one blades are much better. They have cleaner cuts, but at the same time, one blades are way more susceptible to breaking. Just so long as you don't use your one, your one blade on clear parts. Uh, when you use, uh, when you snip clear parts, off of a runner, make sure you, you're using a two-blade nipper. But yeah. Oh, I already have a Jigglypuff. If you want recommendations for a two-blade nipper, I honestly say the USA Gundam Store nipper is actually really good. I've been using that one for a long time, and it wasn't until... A couple years ago that I actually bought a God Hand nipper to replace my USA Gundam Store two-handed or uh, one blade nipper. Hey, you can also do the... You could also just go with, you know, uh, you don't need high quality tools to build good model kits. So long as you get the skill, then you can make a model kit with any tool, really. But, uh, Sword, you're asking if the Gun Primer Gate Remover a good purchase? Uh, I will say... Uh, it's a very different texture. Because the Gate Remover is a glass file, it's very hard for me to know what I filed down. And the thing is, it's so good to a fault. Because... It removes the gate completely, and it makes it so shiny. And I'm just thinking, I'm like filing down a model kit part. I'm thinking, wait, where did the gate go? I'm, I don't know when I've completed filing it down because you constantly have to look at the piece and move the file. Like you can't just like file it down and then remove the file. It's just like okay, one swipe, look at the piece. One swipe, look at the piece. I think. Using the glass file because of that makes filing take way longer. However, the end result, it looks amazing. Like, it very much looks amazing. But also, it's also hard to use because it's a glass file. It's so smooth, you don't feel any resistance from the plastic that you're shaving off. So you might end up shaving off more than you expect. But besides that, I think they're good. And I don't think they're worth the asking price. Plus, uh, I assume you're in the US. So, Gun Primer is located in Korea. And it's $30 for shipping. And I... Honestly, I would say... Try to find a good quality glass file on Amazon first. Before you go and commit to buying a gun primer gate remover glass file. Oh yeah, but uh, USA Gundam Store Nipper, 100% recommend. I think it is very good for its asking price. I would highly recommend that if you want a uh, quote-unquote pro-grade nipper. Highly recommend. Oh, does USA Gundam Store also sell gun primer stuff? Oh, then in that case, I think it's a bit more worth it. I did not realize that gun, uh, USA Gundam Store also sells gun primer stuff. Because I only purchased it from gun primer's website. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, obviously, God hand nippers are the best ones, but I can never recommend them because they're expensive. Well, the thing is, I bought a God hand nipper. I have one that's just $40, which is the same price as the USA Gundam Store nipper. So, and it's been working fantastically. You just have to know where to buy it and be look be on the lookout for restocks. So, but I bought my God hand nipper. It's just a it's the red God hand nipper that's 40 bucks on Hobby Link Japan. They sometimes have them in stock. Uh, most of the time they're out of stock, but they're never discontinued. They're always just out of stock. So I'd highly recommend that. Oh man, I gotta tell you guys, uh, I have a canker sore in my mouth because I bit my mouth last week, and this amount of talking and rubbing my teeth against my cold sore, it is putting me in the greatest amount of pain. Uh, I am in so much pain right now. I need to definitely get some salt water mouthwash and just numb it all. Oh man, wanna know what sucks? So for lunch at work, I went to a pizza place, and for some reason I thought it was gonna be a good idea, but I got a really saucy pizza, and right when I bit into the pizza, all of the sauce, because the sauce has like a little bit of salt in it, you know? Or it's a little, has... It has something in it that makes my mouth just, like, self-destruct. But yeah, I took a bite into the, that saucy pizza, and even though I bit it with the side of my mouth that doesn't have the kinker sore, all the sauce just spilled and coated itself over the kinker sore. And not only that, the pizza was very hot. So I was getting salt in the wound, and the wound was being set on fire. So it was a damn good pizza. Uh, but, my god, I was in pain. And, yeah. Uh... And I've been doing this canker sore mouthwash thing every single day since I've had it. And my face, it just hurts constantly. Uh... I swear to god, if I was alive in Neanderthal times, and I had a canker sore, I would have just bashed my head with a rock and just ended it. Like, canker sores are so much pain. On top of Shark Week? Oh my gosh. On top, like, this couldn't have happened at any other time, but on top of Shark Week as well. Come on now. Come on, universe. Yeah, so, I've been making myself... Uh, ramen. I think I've had myself ramen twice. And usually I'll have bulldog ramen. But now I only just put in like a tiny bit of spice uh, into the noodles. And even then I make them dry whenever I have a kinker sore. So, because I can't slurp the noodle or the noodle soup or so it'll just completely coat my sore in salt. But yeah. Maybe it is a good idea that I take a break from streaming. Not a big break. I'm just saying that next week, I don't think I'll be able to stream next week. And the week after that, maybe I'll be able to stream. Yeah, the week of the 24th, I'll probably be able to stream early in the week. But near the end of the week, I'm going to be away for Sakura-Khan. Yeah, what other Pokemon? I'm just wandering around right now. Where, what other Pokemon should I catch? Let's go over here. It's okay, Mako. You gotta put your rest in health first. Yeah, that is true. I can't have content creator brain all the time. I have to know when to stop. Actually, let's go into area zero. And catch some Pokemon there. All right, let's go get in here. Would you like to go? Yeah, I'll go to this one. Oh, 
All right, let's check out the Pokemans here. It's crazy how this area has its own loading zone. Like you can't just directly fly in here because it's just so massive. That's amazing. But yeah, what would you guys recommend for foods to eat when you have a canker sore? I guess it would just be dry stuff, right? Or I guess just try to chew on the other side of your mouth. Oh yeah, Mako, I wasn't here for the end of the main story, but what do you think? Oh, the main story of the game? I think it was really good. I really like the writing in this game. But... It may not be the prettiest visually, but I think whenever Pokemon doesn't have the prettiest visuals, they make up for it in the writing. Mostly. Because I thought Sword and Shield looked like garbage, but its writing was, for the most part, when they were writing Hop, it was really well done. I just thought Rose's motivation as a villain was very stupid. But yeah. Otherwise, I think the writing in, uh, in Sword and Shield is great, and the writing in Scarlet Violet is fantastic. When I was throwing away garbage on Thursday, a man gave me a whole pizza while tossing an empty pizza box in our garbage bin. He said, good pizza, and drove off. Should I eat the pizza? If it doesn't look like it was eaten or anything, I personally would take at least a bite of a slice. Maybe not eat the whole thing, but maybe just a slice or two is fine. That's what I'd do. And again, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a gremlin, so uh, results may vary. Hopefully, you don't get food poisoning. Yeah, the professor reveal was neat, and I ended up liking the story uh, for all three of our friends. Yeah, everybody's story was really good. I especially really liked Arvin's story. Man, there were some points where I was just like, I was about to cry uh, with uh, over Arvin's story. Arvin's just such a good character. He's probably my favorite male character in all of Pokemon. I think, yeah, more than N, I think I like Arvin the best. I'd say for top three male characters in Pokemon, it's probably Arvin, Kieran, and N. Oh, and Hop. Hop is really good. And again, when it comes to Arvin's story, it should be no surprise that I would be nearly crying at his story because uh, freaking it has to do with his dog. And every time... I, I mean, I... Like, I do not joke about this, but every time I see a trailer for a dog movie, I get teary-eyed. I love stories about animals and stuff, so... Uh, hearing... Or, like, seeing Arvin try to help out his poor dog and stuff, it just... Tugs at me, you know? And then him, at the end of the game... Being like, oh, I'm, I finally get to hear you, hear you say that you're proud of me, Dad. It's like, oh, ah, oh, frick, man. Heart wrenching. But yeah, excellent story. What the heck is up with this Pokemon? Meanwhile, Nimona just battle, 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 battle. Yeah, her story was kind of weak, but I do like the interactions with her. I think she's a very fun character.
There we go, finally. My only problem with the Sword and Shield, I wish the lore on Eternatus is more deep and Rose has power corruption like development where he doesn't care what happens. Yeah, because his rise to becoming a villain just came out of nowhere. And his motivation is, oh yeah, the Gala region is going to run out of energy in a thousand years. It's like, uh, okay, why are you doing this all now? And treating it as like it's so urgent. Like, you have a thousand years, you can go a little bit slower. It would be one thing if the game had... If all of Galar had... Uh... Had power outages during the entire game. But you only see, like, a power outage once or twice in the game near the end. So it's like, why... Do you care about conserving power, Rose? You know if Leon has a better point than you, you messed up. That is true. Yeah, you're really going to be... Uh, you're really... Uh, what's it? Uh, I don't even know what I was going to say. I'm just hungry. My tummy is rumbling. That only hands can satisfy. Do I have any snacks? I don't have any snacks in my room. Dang it. Well, time to go into the kitchen, grab myself some more Girl Scout cookies. I'm about to just... just devour... my thing of Thin Mints. Uh, let's see... Okay, I guess I'll train Pokémon... off-stream. But yeah. Which Girl Scout cookie you got? Uh... What else but Thin Mints? Thin Mints are... Okay, I'm gonna say it one more time in the stream. Thin Mints are goaded, okay? They're just... They are simply the best. But besides that... Uh... Tagalongs. Or no, is it Samosas? Samoas? Jason Momoa? Uh... The little ring ones with caramel and coconut shavings. Those are on the same tier for me. But yeah. I never played black and white, but I always think of this comic someone did with N crying because he's... because there's a bee drill nest in his room and he tells his dad, who glares at him, and goes, Look at me, boy! Look at me! As the bee drills are flying around his head. Yeah. We need more N stuff. I was hoping that for... Pokemon Legends Unova, we get a story with N, but yeah. Yeah, it looks like we streamed for another 30 minutes, and I think this is about the time that I call it a stream. Uh, sorry we didn't really progress much in the stream. Uh, we only... the only thing we really did this stream was just beat Drayton. But, yeah, next stream... Or no, we beat Drayton. Oh yeah, we just only beat Drayton. I totally forgot that we didn't fight Lacey yet. But yeah, next time we stream, I'll fight Lacey and Kieran and stuff like that. But yeah. Uh, any other things I need to... announce? Oh yeah, uh, just to reiterate... Uh, on Friday, March 29th, Saturday, March 30th, and Sunday, March 31st, I will be at SakuraCon in the Artist Alley. I'm helping out my good friend, uh, Gio, uh, with their booth. So, and, yeah, come see our booth at SakuraCon, which is in Seattle, Washington. And, uh, yeah, buy a sticker, buy an art print. I still have many uh, Gunpla Girl stickers uh, from the last convention. And we might even be having a secret uh, art print. 11 by 17 art print. So go check that out. And uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Anyways, this is where I'll be calling it off. I need to go have myself a midnight lunch. And yeah, I'll see you guys possibly next week. Maybe the week after. And definitely see you at SakuraCon. Alrighty. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming.